It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. We have put together a great panel for you. Renee Ritchie from iMore, Ian Thompson from The Register, my buddy Jeff Jarvis from the City University of New York, and this week in Google. We have so much to talk about the new Google and products they just announced, the exploding Note 7. It's getting worse. It's getting worse for Yahoo, uh, too, and Twitter. It seems like nobody wants to buy it. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 583, recorded Sunday, October 9th, 2016. Party on, Zuck! This Week in Tech is brought to you by Carbonite. Keep your business safe this year. Protect files on your computer or server with automatic cloud backup from Carbonite. Try it free. No credit card needed at Carbonite.com today. Use the offer code TWIT to get two free bonus months if you decide to buy. And by GoToMeeting. Why just phone conference when you can go high-tech? Better meetings start with GoToMeeting. HD video means you'll never miss a thing. Screen sharing keeps everyone on task. Don't phone it in. Go to meeting. Start your free 30-day trial at gotomeeting.com today. And by stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with stamps.com. Use stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter Twit. And by audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we talk about the week's tech news. And I am thrilled to have my good buddy Ian Thompson from the register.co.uk here. Always good, Leo. Always uh, good. Always a pleasure. Uh, Ian will be back uh, Saturday, too, I think, to do the new Yes, we're doing new screensavers together. Yeah. And so but bad news, and I was worried that maybe you wouldn't come back after you learned that the British shop in Petaluma has closed. It's closed. Oh. You didn't oh, know. No. I told him. I told him he's never coming back. Damn it! Where am I going to get my Twixes from now? Where am I going to get my my my, my, my PG my tips? They did great pasties there as well. That's just wrong. You know, okay, pasties mean to... something different in the UK than it does in the United States. I just want to let you They're know. Not for a savory future... meat pie, then a savory meat pie. That I understand. So, what are pasties over here? Mm. Yeah, I probably ah. don't want to say. Also with us. <laughs> This is the all-international edition today from Montreal and iMore.com. Our good friend Renee Ritchie, a regular on MacBreak Weekly. Hi, Renee. Hi, Leo. Welcome back. Hey. Good to have you back. I, uh, even though I was all over the world, Russia and uh, Finland and the Netherlands, I was reading iMore the whole time because I had with me an iPhone 7. Awesome. And I had to learn how to use it. The thing, there's uh, there's a lot of changes. And then I got the new Watch OS and the new Apple Watch. And then I'm back to iMore to figure out how to use, how, what band to get because you're the king of bands. Um, yeah, I have so many, Leo. <laughs> the band they ship, by the way, with this most expensive Apple Watch now, the, the edition, yes. is the worst band ever. It's a dirty gray rubber band. <laughs> yeah, I, I would really like a ceramic white band to go. Like, I'm figuring the price would double to make that band, but I would still like that option. Even if it were just the same color as the watch, white, but it's yeah. dirty gray. Anyway, yeah. that's a yeah. that's a first world problem, I think. That's the ultimate first world problem. <laughs> you know, this watch was thirteen hundred dollars, but the band is just rubber. Yeah. Yeah. It's non a, it's a non combustible Apple product though, yeah. Leo, so you're Steve safe. Jobs is that true? Yeah. Fluoroelastomer does not burn? Steve Jobs oh, is doing 45 reps per minute at the moment. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what does burn apparently is the Note 7 even, oh. and this is terrifying, the replacement Note 7s. Now, I really want to emphasize the the invest... The, I, I want to know more. Because uh, maybe this isn't an official replacement. This is the first one we heard about, a fire on the Southwest plane. It wasn't mm. plugged in. It was in a guy's pocket. Started to heat up. He pulled it out, threw it on the floor, it burst into flames, burning the carpet of the plane yeah. and the subflooring, forcing the evacuation. Fortunately, the plane was at the gate. Everybody got off. Right now, the fire department has that phone, but Samsung says we want it, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission says we want it. But that's not the last story. There have been two more 
reported. Well, it, I asked Jerry right, be, yeah, right before the show. So Jerry Hilderman from um, Android Central has been following it all weekend, and there have been five Whoa. in the U.S. now and four in Asia. Yeah, it's two, it's, two of them just in the last twelve. He said, as I was writing one story, two more happened. Uh, how? Which is where we are right now. At this point, you got to think maybe these are the replacement phones. Well, I, okay, I've spoken to Samsung. I've spoken to the consumer protection people. Neither of them have had the phones in their hand so they can't at the be moment. Sure. But it's looking increasingly likely as though they rushed out the replacement. They didn't think this one through properly. And they're in a whole world of hurt from a branding Here's position. the conspiracy theory. They rushed it out. They got it out within a week, right? They started shipping 20, on the 21st of September. And I talked to somebody today on the radio show who had a replacement phone. And he, his theory, and I think it may, not, it may not be far off, he says, you know, this phone doesn't hold a charge very well. I think they changed the firmware hmm. but did not retool the phone and of course that maybe makes sense to do it that quickly yeah. they'd have that phone is not is it just like the iphone is a sealed phone you'd have to take out the entire battery but probably also the charging assembly um i don't know if they could get replacement phones in that quantity out within a week maybe all they did was change the firmware yeah I, there's something deeply fishy going on about this because i mean it was there for the taking apple was going to get a lot of flack with the iPhone 7 coming out, dropping the audio jack, and not really doing that much else to it. The market was theirs for them, and I think they're just like, we've got to get this out now so it's you know, we can get win over disgruntled Apple users. And they seem to have screwed the pooch on it's this It's quite one. the opposite. Now, I think a lot of people took their refund on the Note 7 and bought iPhone 7s. And well, we'll fool them, but anybody no. who took a replacement phone, by the way, all the U.S. carriers, and I would imagine this is true worldwide, are saying, fine, bring the replacement phone back. We'll, hmm. we'll get... We'll make it a whole. You whole. We'll either give you a and refund or AT and T won't even give you a replacement Note Seven anymore. No. They just pulled the plug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Uh, as I would expect. And at this point, how bad is this for Samsung, Renee? So there's a couple of things to pull apart here. One is that. Uh, we don't know very much about this. Like Samsung owns 20% of the battery company that made this thing, Samsung SDI. Uh, but batteries are very complicated. Lithium-ion batteries especially are very complicated beasts. And there were stories about maybe the, the positive and negative polarity weren't properly separated and that was causing an unusual amount. There's always some failures, always some critical failures. Like you see every phone. Uh, iPhones have occasionally burnt. Uh, LG, almost any phone you can go find a few incidents uh, of this happening to. But this was happening with alarming regularity, which made them think that maybe the chemistry was wrong. Uh, and there were rumors, of course, that they did rush it to market to try to beat Apple to the punch here. But it's also possible that what they thought was wrong is not what was in fact wrong with the battery. And whether it was firmware or they switched supplies because apparently supplies from the other companies that they were pulling from weren't having these incidents. Uh, but it just could be that they failed to identify the proper problem or the problem was much deeper than what they thought there would, uh, would it be because those replacement phones did come to market really, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, I mean, yeah, Samsung hasn't said anything. The Fireborn hasn't said anything, but The Verge has done a great job job uh they've gotten photos of the boxes they've they've checked the uh, the numbers yeah, on samsung if own those tools. verge phones are accurate those verge photos are accurate and i think i see no reason not to think so these were the official replacements at least yeah. the South and multiple Southwest. times yeah uh, three or four of them, at least, they've identified. And one of them, a Samsung person accidentally texted the owner of the phone yes. saying, what do you want me to do? Try to suppress this. <gasps> uh, and it sounds like in Korea, there's charges of them trying to suppress it in the media as well. And that is, it's never the story. It's always the, I mean, it's never the crime. It's always the cover up. Uh, and that is potentially, I think, even more explosive than the actual phone incidents. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that text message and it was just like, wow, this is going to make this so much worse because if they're actually talking about this and they've managed to let on they're talking about it in these terms, that's it. You know, they're going to have to uh, a complete product recall and redesign the phone because, you know, people just aren't going to trust the brand after this. Uh, the the Note 7 the, in, in question here uh, was owned by a, a fellow from Kentucky. It On Tuesday, it not only caught fire but sent him to the hospital with smoke inhalation. Um. And Samsung knew about this and didn't say anything about this. They asked him if they could take possession of the phone. He said no, though the company did pay to have it x-rayed. But according to The Verge, the damning evidence comes in the form of a text message that he received accidentally from a Samsung representative. Quote, just now got this. I can try and slow him down if we think it will matter or we just let him do what he keeps threatening to do and see if he does it. So... I think it's a smoking gun. They <laughs> they clearly knew about it and were 
but they knew what the damage would be. I mean, this is oh, it yeah. for the Note 7, right? That phone yeah. is now dead. Yeah, I mean, c c people are capricious, and we've seen many examples of where, you know, like, people like us will just say never again. Like, I I've done that with companies that have installed rootkits or other forms of malware on their own machines and sold them to me. But other people go and buy the next version immediately thereafter rational. and go on. It's not fully yeah. rational, though, because really, statistically, even if you had the original Note 7, it was w 1 in 30,000 that you might get a, a burn. But consumer behavior is never rational. Yeah. I mean... Well, and who wants to take the chance? It's just a phone. I'm not going to mm. take the chance. All and again, it's a, a little girl batteries was playing with one of them. Say again? And that, a little girl was one of the people playing with one of them, and that's right. something you never, ever want to have happen. Right. Uh, and, you know, if you, people are asking me, and, I, and all I could say is, well, why take the chance? Get rid of your Note 7. Yeah. yeah. Hang but around. here's the bigger problem. Do you then say, should I get a Galaxy S7? No, hang around. Get a, get, get get a, a Note 5 if you really want. If you really want a stylus, get a Note 5. If you really want a Samsung, get a Galaxy S7. If you really want an Android phone, get a Pixel. If you really and you want, should like, feel okay about that. You shouldn't worry. No. No, I don't think so. Because we've had phones and lithium-ion batteries for years, and it, it, even though some small number... Well, it's typically when they're like damaged. Bust. I mean, typically when they're damaged, they've like they, they've yeah. been hit or they've been dropped well, if, or something. If, if, in the yeah. battery, if yeah. a battery gets punctured, but this is the same. The Tesla's yeah. had this problem too uh, with. But I mean, Renee's got a point. You can't use lithium-ion batteries on a mass market product without once or twice them going nuts. All it takes is a tiny sliver of metal within the the, the actual battery itself breaking loose, shorting across, and then instant fire. It's an essentially, you know, it's a very safe technology, but when it goes, it goes boom. And, yeah. you know, it can be quite dangerous in that regard. Yeah, but the, the Note 7 is beyond the statistical norm. It's beyond the norm, I think, that oh, people yeah. need for safety. So yeah. you, you need to take it back. Uh, wow. I, I, oh, by the way, Jeff Jarvis is about to uh, join us as well. Uh, awesome. So we just, we went crazy when we, when we said, oh, we lost <laughs> Ben Thompson. We said, just call everybody, you know, you need and at least four or five. Actually, people. I'm thrilled. I think this is, this is a lot of fun. We'll get Ben again on another time. He probably either forgot or, uh, as, as has happened once before, his internet might've gone out and, uh, then he's kind of out of luck. Um, so kudos to uh, J uh, Jordan Golson for doing a heck of a job reporting for this on the Verge. He's been on it all weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a big story. It's a big story for yeah. all consumers. Uh, I know when I get calls about something, and I got a lot of them on the radio show, that people are aware of it. Uh, and, and I think that it will have a long-term damaging effect on Samsung. Yeah, at just the time when it doesn't need a, a bad reputation. Because I mean, Well, by the way... I have a Samsung dishwasher or a clothes washer. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. And apparently there's a problem there too. Yeah. Don't put it on the extra hot setting, you know. <laughs> and they were accused of, and again, like, they, like bad things will always happen. Like any, this could happen to any manufacturer there, but by the grace of God, it happens to anybody because like it's this technology, but it's how you handle it that really matters and how you deal with consumers. And it, we all, we've gone back to that Tylenol incident repeatedly where they could have just pulled those VAT numbers and yeah. tried, you know, play the odds, but they pulled everything because they knew their brand was more important. And there's there's concerns over how Samsung was trying to cover up potentially cover up evidence for the washing machines too, uh, and th that that's the part that's going to hurt. I mean, Samsung needs to, as a company, get in front of this and do everything it can to make sure that their customers feel that they're protected, and it's not Samsung protecting themselves because that's the part that always hurts a company. Yeah, well, I mean, Samsung certainly worst PR week. Yahoo, a very close second. Oh, we're going to get know, to that in a moment. Yeah. Let me introduce Jeff Jarvis, though. He's just joining Ooh. us. Professor of Journalism at the City University of New York. Sorry, you, you got me on pizza night. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like wine, Jeff. I hate yeah. to tell you, that ain't pizza. Uh, the pizza's done, the wine is still there. You also, you also have to live with my... Uh, Hillary Schwag day. I knew I you'd be wearing Hillary. your. I knew you'd be wearing your hoodie because uh, you were complaining Hillary that hoodie. you bought it and it hadn't in, uh, in August. My, and it hadn't Hillary arrived. stickers and yeah, I'm back from Bethlehem, PA, having uh, uh, registered voters today. So well, oh, and fantastic. I think you probably will want us. I don't know, maybe not to be done by the time the debate starts. Well, it's nine o'clock. You bloody well better be done by then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't that's, know that's how almost... long Twit goes, do you? <laughs> I, I do, I do, but that's two and a half hours from now. Well, all right. I'll, I'll wave goodbye there. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be. On, I gotta be on Twitter for that event. Absolutely. Uh, so, so on Samsung, I, you know, I, I actually feel sympathy for Samsung because they they finally got their act together. They finally yeah. put out good products. They finally yeah. figured it out. They finally stopped with all the worst of the junkware. They finally did it all, and then you know the sex tape came out. Yeah, mm. it is Samsung sex tape, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I would have sympathy for them if they behave differently. Like again, yeah. if the reaction was different, it's hard to have sympathy given reports in both the U.S. and and Korea that they're not doing the right. The thing. real question I mean, it's clear that you nobody's going to buy a Note Seven, the, ever again. The real well, they question should, they should, they've got they've got to just 
Is I it, think they like, will. I mean, like, are Wolfie they out of the just... phone business, though? I mean, that's the real question. Ooh, is it, that's that's that'd be nah. a shame. No, no, they're, they're too big they're, worldwide. Think, yeah. You know, and I uh, I know you've already talked about this. Uh, the Google event was uh, this week. Uh, I'm rapidly coming to the point where I think instead of having five phones, four Android phones and one iPhone, I will be down <laughs> to two phones, a Google phone and an Apple phone. And yeah. that will be that. And I'm wondering if that isn't the future going forward. Certainly Google with its announcement of the Pixel, uh, its price point and the fact that the Pixel has features no other Android device has mm -hmm. – Kind of sounds to me like Google's going after the other handset manufacturers. Okay, but 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 Leo, Leo, here's here's my question about the Pixel, and and, and as usual, I'm neurotic, so I need you to talk me through this because I've ordered it and I might cancel it. I don't know. I'm going to be neurotic. I'm from New York. I'm allowed to be. the The whole notion that AI is available only on this phone makes no sense to me because the AI occurs up in the cloud, up in the big, big, big machine somewhere off in Google Land. Well, and it's the same. Apparently, AI is an allo. So if you put the Allo Messenger on your Apple phone or your uh, yeah, I tried phone. that this week. I tried to ask. Well, yeah, we were alloing uh, back and forth. I was in Paris and right. we were alloing. That's why I, I don't also use Allo with with Google Assistant this week, and it doesn't work so well. So I understand I want to have Allo available at a crack with the phone, but what I'm saying is I think that Google just pulled a marketing trick and put uh, Assistant into the new phone because it's a marketing thing. It's not because there's any hardware reason that it should be there or not elsewhere, right? There maybe is an argument that they don't want to go wide right away, that they want to slowly, and this this happens, well, roll it out. You see, this is why I'm kind of skeptical about the whole, whole sort of Google is going after Samsung with this because they don't have the infrastructure in place to do the kind of long-term large infrastructure uh, so a lot large sales and have the infrastructure good to point. That's that a bigger problem. Yeah. So they, really, really good point. They're not going to be going up against Samsung directly. Although Verizon is going to be yet. selling the Pixel. They're going to sell it in their stores. Yeah, I mean Verizon's a very small player outside of the U.S. Yeah, I mean yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. it's a pure U.S. sell. Yeah. Everyone else, it's it's all down to SIM cards. And Verizon is a historical or technological yeah, yeah, anomaly. Yeah, it really has no further place in the in the tech sphere. But if Google are actually serious about taking on Samsung, there's a whole bunch of other stuff they need rather than just, we've got this shiny new phone. Um, and Samsung's AI buy, AI buy uh, you they know, just a bought Viv. Viv, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the folks who did Siri, sold it to Apple, yeah. have crea created a new AI, Viv.ai, and uh, just sold to Samsung. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's, you know, Microsoft. everybody has to, Microsoft's got Cortana, mm -hmm. Google's got Assistant, uh, Apple's got Siri. You got if yep. you're going to be a player, you uh, Amazon's got uh, Echo. And if you're going to be a player, you better have. Well, if you want to be a platform, you have to have uh, a virtual yeah. assistant. <laughs> Samsung so far has been Android licensee, but it, they've been flirting with being their own platform right. for a long time with their own store, with their own variant and operating Tizen. systems. With Tizen, yeah, Tizen and bought yeah. up before Tizen. Uh, what did you, what did you think of that notion? What did you think of that notion of going from from mobile first to AI first? Uh, who was that? I like that. You know, let's take a, yeah, let's take a break because uh, I want to. I want to uh, be timely in our commercials so we can get you out in time for the uh, debate. But uh, but I, and I also want to spend some time on this uh, Google announcement because there is a lot to unpick. An awful lot there. Is. there. Um, great, great panel today. Jeff Jarvis just joining us. I am honored as ever to be here. Oh, we love having you on from this week in Google, and uh, I missed you over the last couple of weeks. I missed you I missed too, you, Leo. Man. But I followed along your your uh, hoodie drama, and uh, <laughs> and I'm glad to see you and uh, talk to you. Look at that. What? Why would a uh, uh, campaign uh, for a president sell a hoodie? I'll sell anything cool. to get the brand out. A hoodie. I don't. It does, this does have a rather a monk look, doesn't it? Yeah. Hillary. Hoodie of solidarity. Oh. There we go. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Uh, also with us uh, from the register.co.uk. Oh, it's hoodie time. <laughs> Where's Solidarity. your hoodie? Solidarity. I'm sorry, mate. I, 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 I wore a shirt uh, with the time. Two monks and bloke. a Brit walk into a room. <laughs> well, meanwhile, from, from Brexit land. Yeah, from Brexit Yeah, land. okay, rub it in, rub it in. Yeah, you know, well, we've got, we got plenty of rub in here. You've got, got another Brexit, 30... we got Nexit. I mean, you got everything. <laughs> You've got another 31 days to call us stupid about that vote, Ooh. and then when President <laughs> Trump comes <laughs> in, boots on the other foot, Macy. <laughs> Mighty. Oh, and then also, of course, from Montreal. It's the international episode. There's uh, the only guy. There's the only guy who can smugly look at the rest of us thinking, ha, 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 we got nothing to know. <laughs> only for the moment. We've had our dark days, too. By the way, I've been, I've been getting calls uh, ever since the pre-show from uh, Danish listeners. It was Belgium 
that didn't have a had a, a constitution. Oh, a, a crisis, a, a parliamentary crisis. It was for three hundred some days. I think they had, they no, had no president, but now yeah. they do. And the country ran perfectly well. And Denmark Italy, has been Italy and Israel almost every yeah. year, right? There's a message there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was in Belgium. It was running well. The mm. chocolate and the beer was fabulous. waffles, chocolate, beer. I mean, what else <laughs> yeah. they really need government waffles. for? Oh man! Did you, did you have any herring, Leo? No, I avoided the herring like the... Oh, oh you missed you, know, you wasted it. You wasted it. <laughs> I did not. He was not. in Stockholm. He had no herring. I, w I was only briefly in Stockholm. I didn't get to Storehaus. Long enough. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I could have had herring, but no... <laughs> I chose otherwise. <laughs> as long as you didn't have that fermented shark stuff, which just the smell of it is, you know, they don't even allow that on aircraft in Sweden anymore because it's just, if a tin breaks, they've got to steam clean the entire it's aircraft. Like Samsung 7. Please turn off, yeah, it's the Samsung off 7 of food. <laughs> turn off your fermented shark. Our I was on the plane, Leo, and they made that announcement. And I the, know. someone behind me, someone behind me said, "Oh, what's going wrong?" And then this guy said, "Oh, it'll burn down your house." And then everyone in the cabin started freaking out. Uh, and they took like five <laughs> minutes to try to calm everybody down before takeoff. What's still unclear, though, is if I mean these phones are clearly burning even if they're not charging. Hmm. It's not clear that they're not burning if they're not on. I think that if it's burning when it's just sitting in your pocket, it doesn't matter if it's on or off, yeah. right? That's going to kill somebody in a house or a car or something. Good. Yeah. It's really it's not good. Yeah. And also, as a part, I, mean, I know for a number of pilots, their biggest fear isn't crashing per fire. se. It's a fire yeah. on, a, on a cross Atlantic or cross Pacific flight. Because yeah. yes. if that happens, you've just got to get the plane down as fast as possible. And there has never been a recorded instance of an aircraft landing in the sea and coming out of it in one piece. No. Well, just thanks for yeah. jollying up this episode. <laughs> hey, listen, you're I, never going home, are you? <laughs> I used to recover aviation IT, and I swear I could tell you Did horror really? stories. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to get into that. Uh, but first, a word from Carbonite, our sponsor this hour. Carbonite Online Backup protects your files on your servers, on your system. It's automatic cloud backup, and it is a boon for anybody in business. Your data in business is your business, you know, your customer list, your suppliers, your accounts receivable. And so a good backup is vital. How many times have we seen now ransomware bite hospitals, police departments, businesses, and it is devastating. That What was that hospital in L.A. that was out of, you know, couldn't handle patients for like three weeks? If they'd had Carbonite, it had been over in three minutes. Carbonite Online Backup does versioning. That means if you're running Windows, you turn on versioning. Even if you get bit by ransomware, even if you get your encrypted files backed up, you could still go back to the pre-encrypted version. You're never at risk. A good backup is the best solution for all kinds of horrific occurrences, from hurricanes to ransomware. Few things are as bad for business as downtime, so don't take the risk. Carbonite's backed up half a trillion files and counting. More than a million and a half homes and small businesses use Carbonite. And right now it's free, free, free to try. No credit card needed. Just go to Carbonite.com. But do use the offer code TWIT because if you do decide to buy, you'll get two months free with your purchase. For home, for office, for Mac, or for PC, you got to back it up to get it back. Do it right with Carbonite. This week in tech, I'm so glad to be back. After about uh, 10 days away, I started holding little round table panel discussions in the state. <laughs> I was going to say, poor Lisa, because you probably started hosting oh. just during a random thing during the trip. Lisa! Hey, Stan, you want to come over and talk about uh, Samsung? <laughs> oh, my God. Leo, we're at dinner. Stop interviewing them. It's, 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 a, it's really an addiction, the tech news. And... Um, when you're at sea, you know, it's hard to get in the internet. What, so what, did, what, what, what news while you were gone made you most say, mm, I wish I could talk? Was there anything? Uh, that oh, that's interesting. That's a good question. Um, Elon Musk. What happened with Elon Musk? In, in, oh, you, were you here when he detailed his Martian excursion plans? No, oh. no. There, was, I was, I was at sea. I missed yeah. that. What are so he's he's taking us to Mars now? Is that the and deal? And beyond, he yes. is evacuating a world he does not believe is real. This is correct. Oh, this mm. whole thing about the we're in a game, <laughs> the simulation. Yeah, yeah. I would think it's easier to hack it at this point. Don't make a rocket; just hack the code. Most of the space experts I know say it is much harder to live on Mars than you think. A lot harder <laughs> to live on. Mars than on Earth, even in the worst scenario of climate oh, sure, change. But, but, even but, than but, Winnipeg, it is harder to live on Mars than in Winnipeg. It's harder to live on yeah. Mars than Winnipeg. That tells you something. 
Yeah, but at the same time, that's not entirely the point because I think one of the things he's worried about is that we are one giant space rock away from extinction at the moment. Well, that's and if true. you can get a self-sustaining colony on Mars... What does he care if it's a simulation? Yeah, yeah wow, if it's a bounce shot, all, we're still yeah. done. So I did see the, the rumor... Hey, he's going for bonus points. I did yeah. see the rumor, and I like yeah. this, that Elon and others who believe like he does that we are living in a simulation have secretly funded... And this scares the hell out of me. Research to break through the Matrix. Ah, I mean, what would I'm you reading, research? I feel like I'm reading a Warren Ellis story, you know, where he like goes into a fictional universe and brings somebody back or just ha hacks, hacks the bleed. It, it, are they trying to find the blue pill? What are they trying to do? Yeah, I don't know. But hang on. Surely if you break out of the game, they just press, re press reset and we're back to sort of, you know. Puts in another quarter, hits the button. Wham, wham, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> game oh, over, no, man, Game over. We're back to Romeo with Zealand the Savannah again. Say again? Was he born outside the U.S.? He's born in South Africa. Yeah. Just that African Canadian. Just like this guy. Well, yeah. He came uh, outside of Canadian. But he came here at a young age. It's he and his. It's uh, Elon and his brother, I think, who's his spent brother a lot a of time guy. in a hot tub yes. discussing this. Apparently, a hot tub dimension machine. Yeah. Yeah, I think he spent a lot of time in a hot tub with maybe some of California's <laughs> some other, finest. Some other just like, well, the, the yeah. line between genius and madman is very, very thin, and it could go either way. Like, he could be proven totally right eventually. It's just, it's. I it's think there's no way. Of, I think it's similar to the question of uh, does God exist? I don't I don't know if there's any way to prove it. You either. Oh, God, doesn't. this, this twit's going to go it's, on for five hours now. Oh, no. <laughs> it's John Carmack. We've, we've discovered God, and it's John Carmack. Jo God is John Carmack. That's right. Um, so let's talk about uh, the Google event on, uh, on Tuesday, October 4th. This was the thing that really bugged me because I was in the air. Mm. And uh, yeah. I get on the plane and say, is there Wi-Fi? And he said, no, sir, I'm sorry. Good and grief. Who are you flying? British Airways. I'm well, they won't let you stream anyway. Will they let you? Because I know on Air Canada Wi-Fi you can't stream video regardless of. I'm at sea at four the news, in right? the morning. I'm at sea listening to the debate. At f <laughs> It was 4 a.m. We were in Russia. But I'm listening. To, actually, not even. Wow. That was away. just Putin hacking we your computer and putting it on there. But know. I was able to get version of the bit to listen to the audio, and it actually was kind of fun. It, uh, you know, remember they they always said in the the 1960 Nixon Kennedy debate, the people who watched it had a different opinion. Mm. They thought that uh, Kennedy won, and the people who listened thought that Nixon won because yeah. they couldn't see mm. his sweaty upper lip. In the case of this last debate, I think the people on audio had a worst impression because the sniffing was much louder. Oh really? Oh my God! Oh, I barely I mean, what noticed is going, it. I'm th I can't. I'm trying to imagine what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, Excuse me, while well, uh, the presidential <laughs> line and then it was just right weird. Heck. Anyway, not to get political. Then somebody, somebody, at the, I think the New York Times uh, watched with no sound on. They did the opposite. Yeah, it was just as bad either way. I think. Yeah. Uh, Tonight's going to be. I can't tell Alec Baldwin from the real thing anymore. And I think <laughs> bad. <laughs> that was wild, uh, but. Uh, the reason I bring that up, there's a tech angle to that, is T-Mobile versus Google Fi overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. You loved Google Fi uh, in Germany, I think it was, right? Yes, it works pretty well. Yeah. Not for you? It worked okay, but I was really amazed, and I don't know if this is a short-term thing. T-Mobile uh, over the summer said higher speeds, then they extended it. But in most cases, my iPhone 7 running T-Mobile out... Uh, paste mm. my uh, 6P running uh, Google Fi. Really? Yeah. yeah. I would go back and forth. Uh, oh. But no, I've got to say, I've, I've used T-Mobile in Europe and I find it, it it's, it's, it was it's good. Bonza. It's great. It was good in every country. we would, And as soon as we got close to the uh, coast, even though we were sailing the Baltic, we were near land enough that I wasn't without internet a lot of that time. J uh, J Jason got worried during the Google announcement that it was Verizon only. But I bought yeah. the unlocked, which so should be no problem. The good news, well, and you've already seen, I'm sure, the uh, Android police story that said, whatever you do, don't buy it from Verizon. No, because you're not going to get the updates. They've already said. Oh, they no. They may not update as fast. Yeah. But oh, you get media partnerships, Leo. You get media partnerships with Verizon. Oh, thank you, Verizon. <laughs> And you know Verizon, Google apparently doesn't have the cloud. Apple does. You know Verizon will put the Verizon crapware on there. Yeah. Taylor uh, Swift on security had a... No, they Ars Technicus. Ars Technicus, thank you. And that, was that Ron Amadio? 
Uh, yeah, Ron Amadio. Sorry, Ron, I, I owe you. Uh, he says, if you like updates, don't buy it from Verizon. No, I mean, that's just... I mean, I've when I first came here, I used Verizon. I've been shafted by them enough. I like a kiss rather than that with a credit card. But no, the I'd never go for Verizon because, as I say, the whole point about getting a Pixel is that you get the software earlier. You get the security updates earlier. Right. If you're rely, relying on Verizon to push that through, then... Don't bother. Seriously, don't bother. I, it was a little frustrating. Excuse me, me. Excuse me. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Mark Zuckerberg is doing Facebook Live barbecuing in his backyard right now. Uh, uh, can we pull that up, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to pause this version of Twit we to are watch. Putting... Did, is he actually going to show himself killing, butchering? Is he deep frying <laughs> the turkey? <laughs> it's, oh, by the way, thank right you for now. joining us the day before Canadian Thanksgiving. Oh, of course. Uh. And My we pleasure. wish a Is happy Thanksgiving to all our friends in Canada. Yeah, we have it early because of the frost, like the harvest. We have to we have to get all stuff done first. <laughs> Ian asked an interesting you question before the wounds. show began. What exactly are you thankful for? So, I mean, it's Production the same thing you're thankful for in America. Oh. It's, that, it's, it's the harvest festival. It's just the harvest no, 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 comes no, no, earlier no. in, in America. In America, we're thankful. <laughs> the first Thanksgiving, yeah, wasn't it be in P Plymouth? Because Squanto and the Indians hmm. kept the pilgrims from starving to death. Yeah. By bringing squash. Yeah. And in exchange, you killed them all. Yeah. Yeah. You gave them yeah. small. Oh, no, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's similar here. We just probably made up some variant of that folk story, <laughs> and then and then just had our regular harvest festival anyway. It's a harvest festival. Yes. It's. I'm it's, just surprised we don't have Easter a month early, a month late, because you have to wait for it to defrost. I mean, there's no there's no <laughs> harmony here. <laughs> It's uh, the pumpkin spice time has come. Yeah. It is never pumpkin, pumpkin spice time. I've tried that once, and it is the food of the devil and should be <laughs> thrown away instantly. You can't just try pumpkin spice. Yeah. You have to try it in something. I've been mugged like once, and I never want to try that spice. again. And it was pumpkin spice is like mugging for the tongue. You know, it's just, oh. So did, did you order, Leo? Did you order a pixel? Which one? I did. So we got okay. off the plane, and it, it was already sold out. I wanted it, you know, October twentieth. Which one? All of them. The blue. All of them. I got my. I got oh, my order in. If you wanted to get, get it, mine in quickly. The yeah. fastest. You had to do it right away. It's very similar to an Apple debut, but I'm I'm gonna get it in early November, and I but I couldn't get the blue, but I didn't want the blue. That no was blue only thirty two on gigabytes. Only thirty two. Yeah, that's dumb. On the Canadian store, there was no blue. I felt completely shafted. You don't want... What do you want? Question. A blue phone? You want a, I would have liked a nice Canadian red phone. They didn't have that either. I so wanted. I had, to, I had to have 128 gigs. I had to. So I ordered uh, mm. 128. But I couldn't get the XL in that size. Really? Yeah, you know, so I had to get the littler one. You but actually, this is going to be a good experiment. First of all, I haven't had a 5-inch phone since BlackBerry. Right. So that's going <laughs> to, well, no. You're not going to like it. You're going to hate it. And I'm curious what the battery life will be. It's probably better than a D-Tech. I mean, let's be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll, charge, it'll charge to seven hours in, in 15 minutes. I was blown away by that. Is that's that, that... the last thing I want right now, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good news. I'm going I'm to put it on a five-volt charger and just yeah. wait. Let's see if it gets hey, hot. See, I'm kind of skeptical about the fast charge thing because when I was testing out the 5X and the 6P, yeah, you could get 50% within 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. But that last 15%, you had to leave the damn thing plugged in yeah. for another half an hour. Now, so, oh, so there's about, a real sort so of an hour and a half sharp uh, up and then around. Side, two hours Don't let me uh, interrupt, but this just in from oh, Mark Zuckerberg. No. Um, Backyard. Yeah, no, this is this is my weekend thing. I love this. I just go. I, I'm doing my triathlon and running training, and then. Um, and He's and got I a big green egg. I love the is, big green egg. Yeah. This yeah. Is what my wife and I love doing. Is he gonna do a turducken? <laughs> wow. How many, how many people are watching right now on Twit? <laughs> uh, more, fewer than are watching Mark. Seventy-three point seven thousand people are watching Mark Zuckerberg. Wax on about his barbecue style. Can we just pause culture right now? Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully soon. I, I had a really good time. Lagos was was pretty amazing. The uh, the entrepreneurial energy. Yeah, there, right when he uh, was in Lagos, the really Elon Musk's you know, rocket blew up. Yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. A lot of for who asked me what you need wiring to do. Musk sent out rather. Uh, sorry, is sorry. his <clears throat> big green egg? Is they have the microphone and camera covered on that too? I can't tell. From this <laughs> it looks like you we'll know see. he does have. It, it looks like a wire coming out of it. I must, he must have some sort of wait wait uh, wait wait wait. wait. I think there's big news that's here. a social graph. News here. I'm sorry. This guy's this guy's a billionaire, and I've got one of those seats beside me. No, I mean, it's this is the like, one you get at Costco. This is a folding about camp as low chair. rent as no, you get. No, I, for but goodness. I, think this is, I think this is huge news. We just discovered something. What's that? It's not a gray T-shirt. It's purple. Oh, uh, it's purple. It must be the weekend. This you know, is, he's letting this his is head the down. weekend. Mufti. 
So what I'm curious about is if it's just Mark sitting in his yard, he's got a laptop and a camera, or if there's 25 technicians. On <laughs> almost the certainly <laughs> that. Yeah, almost do we know Including any Colleen video? Kelly, who works for uh, Facebook doing streaming video. Um, somehow I feel like it's the latter. Yeah. Is there a halo froze, rig all just around him right me. now? It's, it's for, well, he's got thousands of people watching him. Well, I was at the presentation that he gave the other week about how he and his wife were going to cure the world of all known diseases, and it was... I mean, I admire his pluck, but for goodness sake, get some, get a sense of hubris in, in, in this, and it just... Yeah, yeah. Well, philosophical, philosophical question here. Mm -hmm. Does intense fame and unimaginable wealth make you crazy, <laughs> or do you have to be crazy to get... What no. you wish you knew, Leo. Most crazy, ergo proper crazy? Is that the <laughs> <Yes>. question? <laughs> yeah, I think... Yes. Yeah, there's a little West Wing here, but yes. I, th I think for the majority of... Certainly people I've met in the tech sphere, they are very smart, very committed people who b happen to become incredibly wealthy, with a few exceptions. Uh, there are complete psychos who got very, very, very wealthy very quickly and not mentioning anyone <coughs> oracle um and there <laughs> they I'm have just thinking know. about uh, mark and elon particularly yeah um or did sergey and larry with their party bus sergey they, and yeah. larry party same plane. thing yeah they did, had the 747 were they like that before and then, then maybe this somehow facilitated their uh if i ability had 20 billion dollars in my 20s I, I think i would be dead now i would just yeah. give me i, I can i can fly <laughs> this plane yeah. I can dive under this ocean. I, yeah. just, I would just do it. I, I remember listening to an interview with one of the Bronfman children, and he said that he's devoted his life to rebuilding buildings with eco-friendliness because he knew if he didn't have a defined purpose, that money would drive him, would Very just good. make him lose all context. Very yeah. good, yeah. yeah. He'd end up like dad. So, so you could, there's no limits. There you could do the health thing, uh, there was a picture of, of Mark and his wife sitting uh, on a couch. And there was a whiteboard behind him, and I said in the comments... I said, I just, I just thought for a second, do you have a whiteboard in your house? But I realized it was your office. And he said, well, but we do have a whiteboard in our Of house. course they do. Where they can reinvent the world. You know, I'm, I'd be tempted, actually, uh, to get that whiteboard paint and just paint all the walls with it. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> this has become a very discursive twit, and it's because I'm back, and I'm just so thrilled to be back with my friends talking, <laughs> and there's all this stuff I want to talk about. And so about. much happened. And so much happened. Yep. Pixel phone. All right. Okay. So here right. was We're the back, big back one for work. me when I got down and I, I started watching the coverage and then uh, watching our coverage with Jason and, and but also uh, uh, the videos and reading the stories. Sticker shock arama. Yeah. What the what? This this is not the Nexus. Yeah. They're supposed to let me pay with my data, Leo. That, that was our deal. Like, <laughs> you know, I give Apple money for, for shiny objects, and I give Google data for shiny objects. The, and the now price the in back. Canada and Australia sounds it's really It's over $1,000 if yeah. you go to us. It was close to $1,300 for my Pixel XL with the protection plan. Yep. Um, oh, that makes Apple prices look plan. reasonable. Oh. What? Uh, Very few things make Apple prices look reasonable, but right. I do take your point. <laughs> they are obviously going for the premium market, and they figure they can do it. You know, people will buy on the Google brand. Well, people are willing to pay silly money on the Apple bot brand because it's got proven design chops and sex technical appeal. chops as well and sex appeal. No, no one has ever said, ooh, the that's a Google phone. That's sexy. You know, it just doesn't work that way. As, and as much as I like the Nexuses... Um, They've never had the fit and finish of a, a single iPhone, and especially the later, latter day iPhones like the seven. These things mm. are, I mean, just the, well, they were meant to be developer phones. Like they were ludicrously low priced. Right. Some of them. And, yeah, right. and I love, I love the phone. Yeah. But yeah. All right. All right. So what so, is that yeah, you're holding up? Wait a minute. Point. Is that what this is, is that? Six B. That's a six B. But if you so, look, so here's the question. Jeff, if you, you look at an did. iPhone 7, here's the jet black iPhone 7. I know. This is, a, this is like, should be in the museum. I can see myself in it. It should be in the museum of modern art. I mean, there, everything. It's hand candy. It, it feels like it was like some hmm. craftsman. Okay, but you know, here's the issue with the Nexus, with the new, with the, with the Pixel. I have to believe that, that there is no hardware tied to the AI thing. It's a temporary thing. You get some benefit to use it directly. You can still use Allo. Not a big deal. Number two, the camera. Okay, it's a better camera, but that's it. DxO what? Mark says it's the best camera. Fine, fine, the, fine. Uh, fine. See, they're, yeah, they're Do you trust them, Renee? I mean, uh, no. So, uh, so <laughs> the thing, uh, 
<laughs> no, I, I don't. Well, for a couple of reasons. And I think uh, Matthew Panzerino explained this really, really well the other day. It's, well, one is that they make products. So it's always hard to have a, a scale right. when, you, when you're selling that big ad at the bottom for your camera. But the other thing is that the scores, they, they give them the scores, and then the scores are generational, but they don't really change. So there's a bunch of cameras that came out two years ago that are obviously worse, but still score high because the scale is never adjusted. Because they were high for that time. Yeah, for that yeah. time. And it's unclear what the score, like, I, I believe the Pixel has an outstanding camera. I think there's a whole bunch of smarts in it. But what do those two numbers mean? Like, what? What is the differential there? I think they don't do a great job uh, in explaining it, which is why like, I'll wait for the Anantech review or, yeah. or some of the other reviews like that to, to tell me what's going on. Well, and also there's more than optics involved. Uh, software that Apple, the stuff Apple does in software to those images is pretty remarkable. I have to say, I came back, I took I took an iPhone 7 on the trip, for hmm. specifically the 7 Plus, to, to take a lot of pictures. And I also took a very high-end uh, Leica camera and I have to say, many of the images are more pleasing from the iPhone. Yeah. Um, the Leica's design They did a good really job with the noise. Like on the portrait really mode, they really crisp. tuned the noise. Like they, did, they do a disc blur um, effect, and they tuned the noise to look like old-style yeah. film. So even when you're in low light, it doesn't look like the best digital photo in the world, but it's got this incredible humanistic feeling that feels like in the old days when you took a film photo and it wasn't quite the right light or speed, but you just love the memory it gave you, and they've been very good at tapping into the, the emotional resonance of the so photo. So yeah. we shouldn't credit this score of 89, the highest score DxO Mark's ever given out. It's a, But at least say, it's a decent camera. Okay, so yeah, why oh, should I great. buy this? Yeah. For this huge price, I don't see... What, what is the real... Let's be really honest. No OIS what is the is huge the advantage right, over the 6P? Uh, assistant. Yeah, type Google integration. But again, again... That's that is a marketing ploy, I think. Hmm. Well, I, I know. No I would reason. like to know what's the difference between OK Google and the new Google Assistant. What is the difference? And well, not only that, Leon, but try something else. They're arguing this is the only phone with Assistant because why? Because they chose to make it that, not because there is any hardware connection that makes it only possible. No, no, no. Can no, no. they? Yeah. Can't they turn on a, sh a, a switch tomorrow could. and make it available? They would have to else? code it though. Like I think it's the tight into like it. They they have limited resources and they were able to do the tight integration on this phone first, and then maybe they'll go and backport it to other phones. But it's well, just getting and, everything. and by the way, the, the Google Home, software. which they also announced an Echo uh, competitor. Yeah, uh, and that will also. But what's have the tight? Resistance. What's what's that tight integration mean? It's a it's a it's software. Just, thing, I don't think I think it's software thing. only, Jeff. I agree. I think you could. Yeah. You might make the case that Google didn't want to roll it out into you know phone Android There's wide. An extra chip. So, yeah, I just I mean, I mean that they can, they can pull it into the OS. That they can build it right into the OS the way Siri is built into the OS. And with hmm. the existing phones, they'd have to go back and re-add it to the. Like I think it's it's imminently possible. It just their timelines are different. For these okay, things. but but yeah, I've got a Google phone. I've got a six P. For them to add back in the AI capability to this, I've not heard any reason yeah, why that's not switch. quickly yeah. doable. Exactly. I have to think this is, the, this is the only differentiator that they could offer on this phone. So right? why spend this fortune, this well, very expensive phone? Hmm. I get tempted. This is my neuroses. I do this every time on this, on these shows. So I've ordered it immediately because I'm, I'm neurotic that way. Hmm. And then I turn around and say, am I wasting nearly $1,000? Should you I just be. cancel this sucker? No, my thing is also if I don't want an iPhone, like I don't want an iPhone. Like I loved getting this phone because no one in the world that's would the mistake this for an iPhone. Oh that's the Windows phone. Oh my goodness, you got a Windows phone. How retro. But it looks, that's well, I have freakish. one of each. I, I have <laughs> Home Freeze, I have Nexuses. I try to get one of each platform, but I like that they're all different. So I, I, I tend to gravitate to, towards the more extreme. Are you sad platform. that BlackBerry has finally thrown in the towel and says we're not going to make hardware anymore? I'm sad as a Canadian because like we lost Nortel and we, we lost 3, 3GFX. <laughs> yeah. We've lost all these. We Very few companies had their own operating systems and Canada had two. They had both uh, BBOS and they had uh, QNX and BlackBerry famously bought QNX and now all the big brains from QNX work for Apple. And that's great, but it doesn't really help Canada. So as, yeah. as a Canadian, I think it's, a, it's an indescribable loss to our technology yeah. sector. Yeah. Yeah, end of an era, certainly. End but of it an had era. to happen. You know, it really had to happen. They missed the market 10 years ago and they never got it back. It, it's, it's really a morality tale when you look at both Microsoft and BlackBerry, both underestimated in 2007 what the iPhone was going to do mm. uh, to the phone business, the cell phone business. Both of them poo-pooed it and waited, and not waited long. At, Microsoft got its first new Windows phone platform three years later. It was still just enough too late that developers ignored it. BlackBerry was even later, and the first few things they did, like the BlackBerry Storm, were so horrible. Oh, the, that yeah, tablet as well. Yeah, it was the internally well. codenamed. Yeah. 
Well, the tablet, they didn't build phones for a year so they could get that tablet out. I mean, the whole thing, even Microsoft, if they had, they didn't realize the consumer phone, if they'd made an Xbox phone that ran uh, Halo and put it on every store shelf, maybe they'd have a shot with the <laughs> consumer market. But uh, they, they're branding everything. Just scream, don't, please do not buy me. But you see, at least BlackBerry did something. You know, everyone talks about Apple invented the smartphone. Rubbish. Apple, no, Black uh, uh, yeah, BlackBerry made smart. the smartphone yeah. absolutely yeah. essential. Yeah. Apple just made it look pretty. But Microsoft has been trying to do a mobile operating system back since Win, so it was a Windows CE. And it just hasn't worked all the way along the line. They're too locked into their particular mindset. Maybe that's it. So, I mean, I, also, I mourn like, the loss Black of BlackBerry, but, you know, at least they did something with the market. BlackBerry, BlackBerry grew up from a pager where Apple just wanted to put right. a computer. Like, we have we have Nix boxes in our pockets now. Everybody would have probably thought Microsoft would be everywhere now. And we're all walking around whether using Android or iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and you have Unix in your pocket. And it's a, it's a very Boy, different era. Has the worm turned or what? Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I want to talk. So, I uh, Pixel, uh, it'll be out. It starts shipping October twentieth. If you ordered it today, you wouldn't get it till the following months. A very expensive. Uh, doesn't seem to have a lot of differentiating features. Perhaps the only differentiating. I want to see the camera, though, Leo. I want to see no the camera. There's no OIS, but they say that it does a really good job uh, in software about like, stabilizing well, the video. Well, you saw the, usually the video stabilization looked remarkable. But how much cropped was that? Like usually when you do uh, you when you do electronic stabilization, you crop it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I like I want to see what that results like. And also again, like what Jeff said, what are you getting for those? Wait a minute those though. Wait a minute though. I'm thinking back to the event when they talked about the video stabilization. They said. A gyroscope measures the motion of the phone 200 times a second. There is hardware stabilization for video in there. Hmm. There's just well, not it, OIS. But the lens is not moving. Yeah, right. so the lens is not moving. It's just the gyroscope is adjusting yeah. it. But I don't know. When the lens is moving, you still get the full frame of that lens. I don't know what happens when the gyroscope is internally adjusting for and it. And they did not it's mention whether that does anything for stills, if they're going to use the same technology or no technology at all. It didn't so, sound like it, yeah. You which know, is we just right. have to wait and see. We also see, have to wait I'm and see about it. the unlimited thing because somebody called the radio show and said, you know, I talked to Google. Uh, the, the deal was, the way they publicized it, is if you're using a Pixel phone, you have unlimited original quality storage. Ah, uh, but... It's a big, lot. big butt on that. Of the JPEGs. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you're sticking to their standard 16 megapixel, uh, I think it's a 16 megapixel mm -hmm. uh, resolution, then fine, you get limited storage. If you want to, if you have your phone setting higher and you want to store those raw images, then it goes against your 15, your 15 terabyte <laughs> storage limit. So there, there is a kicker to that one. So that's good. Uh, thank you for clarifying. Because I, I, I thought, well, that's not the impression I got, but in no, fact, no. it's JPEGs only. Think of it like Microsoft Unlimited Storage. Yeah, they can talk about it all they like, but the reality of the situation is slightly different. So another differentiator gone by the wayside. I'm not sure that this Pixel phone is going to do very well. Oh, so I, so I, I can see the, another unboxing, reboxing coming up in my future. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully... Um, going to be getting the, the review kit on the 18th. Fingers oh, good. Crossed. Oh, good. The one thing that does worry me about the camera, and this is something I've just done a year's roundup of living with the 5X, uh, and the oleophobic coating on the 5X degenerated within about six months. That's the king thing That's that the, makes the, it the, easy to wipe off fingerprints. Yeah, the, the yeah, but that also went for the lens as well. So oh. I was getting some fairly smeary photos unless I took great care of the lens. So, um, yeah, hopefully it's, it's going to be good, but we'll let you know. Soon Renee, you know. case or no yes. on the jet black iPhone? I don't. I don't have cases on mine because wow. I just I like I like the looks a lot. And so far, oh, but you I've got the matte. That's matte. I have both. I have the jet black on the shelf over there. Oh, I have okay. the, the seven in the jet black and the, the seven plus in, in the matte black. I'm I wanted torn. to see both new colors. What do you think? You, case um, or no case? Always get a case for your smartphone. Think of it. Think how much that cost and think how much that cost. <laughs> I know, but the, but the one it's they like have wearing a condom. You just do it. The Millennium Falcon had no case, Leo. And look how beautiful. <laughs> and didn't it look is. beautiful? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Worn. I mean, she the called the case piece they garbage, have for the Pixel is ugly. It's 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 a it's a it's a junky piece of clear plastic, or it's some colored junky thing. Look at look at look at the cases. They're awful. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like agree my six P case. It has this kind of no. I like you know, the six P mm, cases. Carpet yeah. like like the like the Google. Uh, you know VR what, Jeff? Thing, you know. Don't even unbox. Just throw it away. Send it away. You don't want it. You don't need that <laughs> Pixel phone. Get rid of it. Do we agree, though, Leo, that the age of canceled, the hating on, on bezels is over? Because there was, there was such hate that, you know, Apple still had bezels. And now Google's saying, yeah, bezels are cool. They have a huge like bezel. Bezel coming back. You know who doesn't have bezels? Samsung. Yep. <laughs> and their phones explode. So... <laughs>
Well, one, one the bezels man. equal exploding phones. Okay. The bezel buffer. Post hoc propter hoc. <laughs> or something. Uh, what about, uh, okay, so somebody, some wagon, I wish I could find this uh, headline, said, Google announces copies of iPhone, <laughs> Amazon, Echo, Roku, Gear VR, and Eero. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's yeah. so silly because, you know, like famously, I mean, they were, they were music players before the iPod. They were phones right. before the iPhone. They were tablets before the iPad. So to me, there's this thing called copy forward. When you say great artists steal, it doesn't mean you do a bit by bit, pixel by pixel, atom by atom copy, but you take what's come before the best of it and you carry that forward because humans shouldn't have to learn different ways of using all these things. There are very good ways of using it and you build on that and you take it forward. Now, you can argue that the industrial design of the pixel or the utility of the Google Home isn't a significant enough drive forward. But for some people, just being able to log into their Google account instead of an iCloud account or an Amazon account is exactly the functionality they want in that device. So I think we have to judge them not on their me too ness but on, their, on the actual execution of the devices. What I do see, and I think is interesting, is that uh, Google might be taking, might be, I say, taking a page from Apple. Apple's really built their business on a closed ecosystem where everything interacts with everything else and be, and it strongly incents the consumer to buy all Apple. What you know, Your watch can wake up your computer, your, can copy and paste from your computer to your phone. It all works together seamlessly in theory. Uh, Google has in the past kind of been more open, like we're going to work with everybody. Mm -hmm. Allo is both iOS and Android, that kind of thing. But now with this new range of products, and incidentally, no mention at all of Chromebooks or Android Wear. Yeah, yeah which really or got Andromeda stuff. Yeah, <laughs> or this dual operating system code name. Yeah, Android Wear got pushed back, I think, till next year. Nevertheless, yeah. it looks like Google's forget copying all those devices is copying the idea of a closed ecosystem that if you have a google phone you're going to want the google home because it's the same assistant it knows the same things about you that kind of thing they already have that up to a point i mean i've been trying to switch my wife onto android from ios and it's just not happening because you know she doesn't use gmail she uses an alternative webmail provider so she's then got to set that up so that's a good point so if you have a gmail account android makes a lot more sense it makes a, a huge yeah. amount much more sense but there is a there is a price with that in that it's kind of like apple microsoft microsoft went commodity apple went lock yeah, total lock they flip flopped and it works really well you know, if you've got all the bits working in sequence. Right. If Google hasn't, then the entire thing falls apart and you just become an expensive tie-in. So... But watch, watch, I think it's also, like, if you're this. not... if you're, How does it work with the Google Apps, Jeff? <laughs> I am fearing that <laughs> greatly. You know what I'm really worried about? Google Home works with only one Google account currently. So, well, so there's... And, I mean, and a lot of people won't be an Apps account. You know, okay, okay, so, so a lot of people, question, Leo. Yeah. Have I been... Should I just... Here's the question. Yeah, send it back. Oregon. Cancel it. By the way, no, 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 my other question. So now we have Google it. apps now called, what is it, G Spot? Yeah. Yes, G Suite. <laughs> well, because it's you can't find G Spot from now on. It's impossible to find. G Suite. Uh, I'm waiting for the ads to say, Google, <laughs> grab it by the G Spot. Oh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. No. I'm sorry. Oh, I shouldn't have gone soon, there. Too soon, too soon, Leo. Too soon. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, the thing that's interesting, there's a couple uh, things that interest me here. When you're not, when you're more pessimistic about this, the companies tend to control what makes them money and try to fragment what makes their competitors money. So companies are only as open yes. as what they want to disrupt. The voice, uh, and, the voice of uh, wisdom there. You're right. Yeah, so when, when companies become more successful, like Google needs to be open when they're starting off because they need to be on every device because their business requires, requires scale. As you start owning the customer experience, then it makes sense to be more integrated because you can take those loyal customers and reward them with a greater value that comes from, you know, you want them to think buying the next thing, like you said, is greater and greater value. The interesting thing with the home product is one of my understandings is like you know, Apple hasn't made one. They've been experimenting with it for years because Siri is a personal assistant and not a multi-personal assistant. And if you're at home, Leo, and you go read me my text messages, uh, how does Siri know whether it's yours or Lisa's or your kids? And that tackles a huge privacy problem. Where, where's my calendar appointment? Which account gets that calendar appointment? And they don't ever want to leak data from, or you're at work and you right. suddenly say something to your assistant and your secretary is listening to your information or your partner is listening to it. So until you solve the multi the multi-personal assistant problem, they don't want to put hardware in the field. Amazon oh. Echo, of course, Amazon doesn't have anywhere near the kind of data about me that Google and Apple do, but the Amazon mm -hmm. Echo does allow me to switch between Amazon accounts. Yeah. Uh, so, and the only reason I use that at all is for Audible because I have an Audible yeah. account and Lisa has an Audible account and I'll have it read and I could say Google read to me 
and or I'm sorry, Amazon read to me, and mm -hmm. it will read to me from my account, or I could say Amazon switch accounts, and then it'll read to me, and it'll read to me, or read to Lisa's account. Here's my, here's my question about about G Spot. <laughs> should uh, I'm just gonna call it that now? I'm sorry. I'm call it. Um, should I just abandon apps and go ahead and and port my email into a regular Gmail account and give up? There's no reason to have apps. Unless you're a company, just don't bother. I still use it. I mean, we still use yeah. it. it. But it always feels like Gmail gets the gets everything before you know apps does. Not yeah. like just before. Some we, things don't not, don't happen. It's always we have, awful. Of course, we uh, use Google Apps at Twit. We have mm. a big corporate account. Everybody has a uh, the Twit.tv. If you are at Twit.tv, that's actually good. Google Apps. Yeah, we use a Google, we use um, Google Apps for our, for our, our and email. And I well. refuse to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Twit.tv address. I don't use it. I use my Gmail address. Uh, I use Gmail. I don't. I rarely use the company account because I want all the features of Google, right? Yeah, I don't know. I tend to keep, keep work and private life very separate, so I keep my Gmail account for private. My, yeah, it's a little different my, for my, me. This is my private. Well, life. yeah, Welcome, there is that. Thank you know, for joining me <laughs> in my boudoir. Uh, I I think Google is going to uh, stumble here, not mm. uh, with the Google Home. I think that this is going to be a very difficult ecosystem for them to penetrate. I don't think anybody wants multiple devices on their mantelpiece and multiple commands and different... You know, yeah. uh, I just think that's not going to work. Um, I've got to say, there's this three-in-one for the Wi-Fi setup they've got. How many routers do you need, for goodness sake? Well, I mean, that is... Well, that's, now, that's we have a sponsor. Yeah, though. we have a sponsor called Eero that does the same thing. This is essentially... And I think Ubiquity is famous Ubiquity's for that done this for years. Yeah. Ubi mm. Ubiquity pioneered it. But they had it was very difficult for a normal user. Uh, Even to, Sonos, to some extent, like they're they're a mesh network. People mesh. don't think about it that way, yeah, because yeah. it's not a router. Yeah, but just um, get a, a router. Get a router no, with, with three aerials. You, you make your own. No, you make you your own aerials and see, you point them in the right direction. A lot of when people, you're in the mansion, you've yeah, got when to you're put in the, <laughs> when you live in the penthouse, you need because <laughs> it's uh, it's spread Lovey. out. Lot, this has actually become a huge problem, even in apartments, because of congestion. There's about a million, ah. right? But also just distances. And so I, I do think that these are there are better ways. It's about time we revolutionized. Uh, in fact, I'm waiting for Apple to get off its duff. It's been sitting on the airport extreme for how many yeah. years now? Uh, several, but again, like this is the this is the thing that you you can to an extent experiment with software. When you start experimenting with atoms, and I was about to say that about Google Home, it, Google is at its best when they put everything behind it. And if they say we're going to do Google Home, we're going to own it, we'll put it on the market, and we'll iterate and we'll iterate and we'll iterate and we'll make it great. Google's at their worst when they're like, ah, uh, here's this wave thing, maybe it right. won't exist three months from now. Right. And people are less tolerant with that with atoms. Like the, the Nest stuff, I think, is a great example of yeah, how the, people feel yeah. don't feel support the product. Right. Uh, and you, you, you that's really that. hard to do. So Apple's thing is like, is the Airport Express, should it just be a, a router? Should it be a, a mesh router? Should it be something that downloads all your iCloud information, all your updates you know, to your local server so you don't have to wait for them anymore? Should it preload that stuff? Should it give you Siri functionality? How do we do multi-person Siri? How do we do beam forming properly? So they, they're going to answer all these questions and then best case, they put out an iPhone. Worst case, they put out an Apple Watch and a couple of years later, it's, it's much more coherent. Um, but they tend to do that experimenting internally. And I think sometimes they do it too much and things like MacBooks or routers or, or other things just languish in the meantime. Let's take a break. We'll have more uh, Renee Ritchie from iMore from the register.co.uk. I always say that so they could find it. Yeah, yeah. We're sticking with the .co.uk URL because we're traditional that it's way. It's kind of cute. Uh, we like it. Ian Thompson. <laughs> uh, we we'll banned in Europe soon. Yeah. Uh, oh. He's he's going to... Hey, don't worry. We'll be coming back for this country once, you know, you've, you've screwed it up enough. Then, you <laughs> know. Know. Sir, sir, we, sir, we will Brexit, welcome you with main. open arms. Yeah. <laughs> Renee, yeah. You and Re go in through the north. You and Renee can come down and invade us. Right we'll about now, happy. I'm thinking a queen and a prime minister looks pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis is also here from uh, City University of New York. Buzzmachine.com is his blog. Stop it. Stop the <laughs> the free plugs. <laughs> he apparently is with her. Uh, and uh, we'll have more in just a moment. Our show today brought to you by GoToMeeting. Uh, if you are having uh, phone conferences, and I think in any business you're going to have phone conferences, both with clients and in, with colleagues, right? Especially nowadays with businesses that are distributed all over the world. Uh, I want to recommend you try something else. It's just as good as a phone conference. In fact, it could start as a phone conference, but it becomes much more very quickly. It's go to meeting, the high tech leader. You can start a go to meeting very easily. They have a plugin for Outlook. You click a link, 
send the link to your client or colleague. It's very easy, even if they've never used it. They click the link, the software installs. All of a sudden, they're up and running, and it could just be a phone bridge, just like your regular conference bridge. But then, here's where the magic starts. You go, I, you know what, let me show you what we're talking about. You turn on screen share, suddenly they're seeing your PowerPoint presentation, or maybe you're working together on a document. You can collaborate. And then even better, you say, eh, you know what, I'd like to see what how you feel about all this. Turn on your camera. I'm going to turn on my camera. Suddenly, you got crystal clear HD video. It's like being in the same room, on the same page. It is so much better, whether it's a sales demo, a presentation, a collaborative or ad hoc meeting, go to meeting. Every moment counts with go to meeting. Nobody likes meetings, but if they can be more productive, more efficient, get the job done better without travel, that's got to be good. Just ask. Nine out of ten go to meeting users say they close deals more than 20% faster. Don't phone it in. Use go to meeting for your free 30 day trial. <laughs> go to go to meeting.com. Just click on the button that says try it free there. Go to meeting.com. Try it today. We thank them so much for their support of this week in tech. So, just because Google doesn't mention Chromebooks doesn't mean they're not going to. Oh. Yeah, oh. Now, Ian's sitting here with a pixel. No, no, I've got, I've, I've got a pixel, and I'm a little concerned that Jeff they loves might. His pixel. Yeah, I think they're taking their eye off the ball when it comes to the Chromebook. I, I think, I think you're right. How about, you also, I, I'm also using the, the 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 Pixel C, which I love. Yeah, now. that's right. a ba that's orphaned. You can I travel that with it. That's orphaned. That's done. But, Do you have Linux on your Pixel Leo, on your on your uh, Chromebook, Leo? Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes not. Crouton makes yeah, it very Crouton easy. Build. Yeah. Um, I, you know what the problem is? It turns off the secure boot. And I really like the security of Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I kind of like that idea that I'm just using it as it is. Now that I can put Android on there, have you guys been playing with the Android store? Been playing about with it. I mean, I know what you mean about the security. I take my Chromebook to DEF CON and other hacking conferences. Really? Yeah. And you feel safe um, there? Yeah, I lock it down. Do you power know. wash it when you get home? Uh, I, I basically scrub the entire thing yeah. and start again yeah. from scratch, yeah. but that's just what you do. I put mine in carbonite about, about and two minutes and 30 seconds, right? Well, it's fast. It's yeah. easy. I mean, I, now I recommend de every time I talk to normal people, I say, get a Chromebook. Forget this Windows and Mac. Just get a Chromebook. Wow. Yeah, I've come, come at 180 degrees. Yeah, I don't go that far because wow. you can't game on a Chromebook. There, there's well, it, it, there are people who need a uh, Windows or Mac. They know who they are. They're gamers or they're rocket ship designers. They own Final or, Cut licenses. Yeah, or they're yeah they're editing video or they're <laughs> photographs. They know that, and they are probably more willing to take on the responsibility of a general purpose operating system. You need to be a security expert. You need to kind of be willing to mess with it when it stops working right because it's such a complex beast. Hmm. A Chromebook is for normal people, and if well, you don't also, know, just, you need just a general takes away purpose. From the hassle. Yeah, if you know you There's don't no need hassle. a general purpose operating system, you should be getting a Chromebook. You should yeah. only get Windows. Windows used to be the default. Oh, well, getting a computer, you're going to get Windows, right? Now I think the Chromebook is the default. I think it's become, it's outsold Macintosh last quarter. But you know what bothers me is is that, I mean, all right, so if they don't want to come out with a new Chromebook for they, nine months or a year, they but just still make sell the old one. Well, they stopped, didn't they? If mine yeah. breaks, I'm I'm screwed. But bear in mind, Chromebooks, I think they've got a, a schedule up, but it looks like they're only going to be supported for about three, three and a half years. Yes. Now, Google may change on that when people suddenly start finding dead machines in there. So hands. what's Andromeda? And what does this mean for Chromebook, Chrome OS? <sighs> I mean, that was a really it's heavy a, sigh. It's a cool sounding it's name rumors. that people want to associate things to. It's just rumors that it's a some well, sort of we've, hybrid we've been, OS. We've right? had that promise before that they were yeah. going to finally bring together uh, uh, Android and, and and Chromebooks, Chrome OS, um, and they haven't. Well, they showed uh, a demo know. of it at I.O. Um, they showed a demo of, of firing up Android apps within the Chrome OS. Yeah, but that's that different. Just, no, that's different. Runtime, yeah. Yeah. Andromeda is a true combination by rumor of the two OSs. Hmm. Whereas, it whereas what, um, no, it's been it's been guessed for a long time, and and reportedly it's being tested on Nexus nines. Uh, but my fear is that I know Google's attitude. I mean, two years ago when I sat down with them about a Google Plus, may it rest in peace. I made some complaints about things I wanted three years ago, maybe now, things I wanted in the in the, in the web version. They said, "Web? Are you kidding? We don't do anything with that anymore. We just do mobile. That's all we do is mobile." AI. So my fear is they're going to abandon any idea of of anything bigger this than this is Google's biggest problem, the abandonment problem. 
Yes. You can never trust Google, whether it's Adams, Renee, or Bits, yep. to stick with anything. Yes. And this Pixel thing just exacerbates the problem because we're floating in limbo. They made a very expensive Chromebook. People who use it love it. Mm -hmm. The story is internally, this is, you know, people who, uh, inside Google love it. Um, but they have not... Now, because Google's Chrome OS and Chrome, Chrome uh, browser and uh, Android are open source projects, what happens is code leaks out. And that's why we know about Andromeda. We also, in the code, see traces of a new pixel uh, codenamed Bison that yeah. may, you know, so uh, you can start to see that in the code base. But I think I'd be very nervous. Uh, I, I tend to think like when you hear stories about iOS and, and Mac OS, for example, merging, or when you hear stories about Chrome and Android, where these are two very, very different things with very different runtimes, experiences, security models and all these things. And it's often, I think often we, we, we see, you know, it makes sense to us because all we see is the front end. For an, an individual, the interface is the application. So we see these front ends and we think, oh, I could just throw this app on here. But, you know, that's not how the plumbing works. And I think if there is an Andromeda or there is a successor to all these operating systems it's something that comes next it's it's what we did when we launched mobile to begin with they think it over they take the best from both things and they build a platform from the drivers back on up that does all the things they want it to do instead of some sort of hodgepodge frankenstein os that will really make nobody happy it's and hard probably to do a security yeah. nightmare and i'm not sure exactly i understand the business rationale for doing it either it makes you understand why Amazon makes you write the press release first before you make the product. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff Bezos very famously, you know, when you present something, you write the press release to present it. Yeah. Um, Google's autonomous car passed just past 2 million miles. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of miles. I was talking uh, on a radio show. I was doing a radio show in San Francisco this week, and somebody called in and said, look how unreliable software is. Are you going to really trust your <laughs> life to software? And I had to point out, well... These so far, these hey, we trusted to, to taxi drivers who could be, you know, yeah, we, on that's what on I whatever, said. On, on sort of hyped up on coffee. The worst or software booze is or wetware. Pills or, yeah, yeah. Um, so the first million miles took six years. The next million, sixteen months. I so, still want to see it like in Canada or in Russia or somewhere where there's precipitation, <laughs> just yeah. to see if it thinks that rain Snow. is a wall. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting. We got offered a ride in the Google car, but they said, you can't write about it if, you, if we do take you on. What? Well, you can drive about it, but you can't write about it. So you, can, you can experience it, but you can't it. tell anybody. Yeah, but it's like, well, we're journalists, so we've got to write about it. Yeah, so what's no, thank the point? You. Yeah. It's, um, but I, I don't, don't know. get it. Lots of people have written about it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just that we're not Google's flavor of the month of the, uh, over the last couple oh. of years. But, I mean, they... The self-driving car is all very good, but nobody has yet worked out. Okay, supposing they do get it perfected, California has now said autonomous cars can drive in limited fashion on their roads. Go 10, 5, 10 years down the line when we've got autonomous trucks and autonomous taxis and the rest of it. What are the truck drivers and the taxi drivers and the school bus drivers going to do? They're not going to be able to retrain for jobs at Google, no. so you've just basically cut about 5 million people out of yeah. the economy. Yeah. So if you're, if you're a truck driver or a taxi driver, I wouldn't advise your kids to get into your profession. Yeah. No, your kids, what about you 10 years from now? <laughs> uh, it's, this, is, this is trouble. Uh, yeah. Um, well, unless you need someone in those trucks to make sure they can grab the wheel when the software throws it back at the human because it just doesn't know what to do. Well, and I should point out that... Uh, Coyote! Ah! While, that's, <laughs> while that's terrible news for people who drive, and there's a lot of them, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. No, it, 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 it technology almost... Technology happens. No, no, it absolutely will happen. I'm just yeah. saying that nobody is actually talking about what happens then. Yeah. You know, I mean... There was a story about Uber, like, basically telling people that they're going to go driverless and they're, they're, they're hiring all these people as interim flesh bags until mm. they get the driverless <laughs> technology. You know, if you were, a, you know, a wonderful footman, you were great at a horse and buggy operation, you're out of work too. And uh, Wooden toy yeah. makers. This, this is the way it goes. But when we had the first big wave of industrialization, it caused social chaos for 50 yeah. years. You had revolutions across Europe. You don't think that's what's happening right now? It's happening it's, right now. It's getting very, very, very close to that. You don't think that's exactly what you're seeing? Is Twitter, the, story, the story that I'm seeing often now is that, is that, is the, the, what, and this is going to have, have a big effect on all of us who are around and love technology is that the impact on jobs is not, not, not immigrants to all those who are voting for Donald Trump. Mm. It is it is technology. Exactly. And but but that, whatever the reason, across, that's the appeal of a Donald Trump it, or a Brexit is why we are we are dying here. Help right, us out. When, when, Leo, when, when the enemy becomes technology, what happens then? 
I mean, you, you look at what happens with Ned Ludd happens. after technology in Europe. And the Ludd the Matrix. go against technology. That's a different story. Ned Ludd happens. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. And yeah, and then things, but Ned Ludd failed. This is the whole thing. And people who go oh, ultimately, against, this will fail. Yeah, There's no people who go against technology oh, yeah. will fail. It's going to happen unless we were reduced the to the Stone Age. It's going to happen. Yeah. But what worries me is that writing mobs don't build chip fabs. You know, if if we're going to go through like a 20 or 30 year period of complete anarchy, then we're losing out on a big opportunity. Because if we just thought about it a little bit beforehand, we could avoid all that and get all the benefits. Ah, uh, I like it. So who's going to do that? Let me just ha -ha. vote well, for that I was, I was, I was going to say, let's let's have politicians come up with this, but <laughs> yeah, so much not going to happen. Can I vote for that person? Who's that there's, person? There's some interesting re you know, research. And what would you do? Online. Would you create... President uh, Snowden. Is it training? Is it... What would you do? We already make enough food and food food to feed everybody on the planet. Well, that's what Mark, and, Mark Andreessen says is, hey, everything's just going to become effectively cheap or free, so it doesn't matter if you have a job. Yeah, there, there's some merit to that, that's but terrible. I've got my doubts about it. Yeah, Gene Roddenberry did that what, 50 years ago. Yeah. Was that a Star Trek episode? Well, every, well, well I think Trek. the entire society was based on no money, right? People pursued ah, either right. careers and leisure activities ah. to, to, to satisfy their own inner, inner workings. Oh, boy, now I'm depressed. Oh. Hey, wait until the presidential the debate, then you can get really depressed. <laughs> hugging <laughs> baby pandas, Leo. Just keep thinking about hugging baby pandas. You know, it, it's really... Uh, yeah, they even ruin cats for us now. <laughs> Pussycats. It's really oh, interesting. You said it, I didn't. <laughs> it's really interesting, uh, as I've traveled the uh, uh, last couple of weeks, the reluctance... You, I saw it here in the States. People are very reluctant to talk about the election. Whether you're, I think mostly because you're afraid you'll get in a fist fight because you don't know. Mm. But even when we were traveling around, not you know, in the past, people of, you know, tour guides or, or people you meet on the street might have asked you about the political scene in the United States. Nobody does anymore. They yeah. don't. They don't say, "Are you? Do you?" Who are you going to vote? Who are you going? Well, I bring it up. What? What? I bring it up when I when I do talks to foreign visitors. When I do talks in Europe or on the world, do talks in Mexico especially, and I apologize for what's happening. I get applause. It's an easy. It's the easiest applause. Yeah, line. they want you to break the ice, but I think that they are just what as I, do, I am. I'm very about. nervous about bringing it up at all. If you break the ice, that's different. But they'll talk about it then. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's but, still but you have a split marriage, no? Not that split. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not that split, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. In the UK, so I, we have I, a phrase, if you want polite conversation, you don't bring up politics or religion. And I guess it's the same. The, the yeah. money, in America, money. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've, been, I've been canvassing in Pennsylvania for the last, every weekend I go over to Pennsylvania now. And, and this was the last weekend I could have registered. Last weekend I was in, um, I think it was Allentown. And uh, that was yesterday. I was in Easton last weekend. And I go up to, to a house and uh, the address they give me, and a very nice woman answers the door, and she says, well, I'm for Trump, and my husband's for, for Clinton. Wow. She says, my kids are also split, Trump for, for Clinton. And I said, I don't uh, want to be at your Thanksgiving. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to be at your house. Well, what you do house. is you just don't, you don't talk about politics. You don't talk you about watch Twitch. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah, and that's why we don't talk about politics here. I know. Moving I, I, on. I know we don't. I know we don't. I know. <laughs> no, it's I hard not, not to. to. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> It's hard not to because it is. Uh, it is luck for the luck. next 30 days, this is all it's going to occupy. Is our... another 30 days? <sighs> 30 days, yeah. <laughs> My well, advice is to drink there, heavily. There are legitimate, legitimate tech angles galore here. Oh, there's tons. The of use them. of Twitter is is absolutely fascinating. Let's talk about Twitter. I want to take a break, but let's talk about Twitter because Twitter had some very bad news this week. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to buy them, Leo? I think you're the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> I think the price might drop low enough that I could buy them. Twitter, Twitter. Twitter. And you know what? If I bought Twitter, I would put them out of business, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, <laughs> you know I'm not a fan. Used to be. Used to be a fan. I used to be the person with the most followers on Twitter. And I'll, you tell, quit the first of I'll tell you how times. long ago that was. I was number one on Twitter with 5,000 followers. <laughs> and then you went well, to Jaiku. I thought it was 40,000. No, 000? it was 5,000 followers. And then it was me and Kevin Rose. And Kevin just surpassed me. And then this guy named Ashton Kutcher came along. A plus K. And that, that was it. He got to a million and that was it. I was just uh, an also ran. But, I, but I, in my heyday, yeah, it was probably like 2008. I think it was 2008. 
Those were the days. Those man. were the days. Those Back were when I was on Twitter. Days, I used, that's going to be my epitaph. I used to be number one on Twitter. <laughs> This is all fields when I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Stamps.com. You know what else you don't need anymore? A trip to the post office. Stamps.com lets you do everything you do at the post office from your computer and your desk. Talk about disintermediation. This is awesome. But I got to tell you, the post office loves Stamps.com. Because if you're still using the post office, right? But it makes the post office as easy to use as anything. You know, you don't have to get up from your desk. With stamps.com, you buy and print, buy and print real U.S. postage from your computer and your printer. No postage meter. No, no, no. No expensive ink, nothing. Uh, just your computer and your printer. You got everything you need. It'll print right on an envelope. That means it'll put your corporate logo. It'll fill in the return address automatically. It'll even pull the sender, the recipient's address from a website, an address book. It works with everything. You can also do, like, for instance, if, let's say you've got customs forms or forms to fill out for express mail or certified mail. It'll fill those out. It pulls all that information right from your address book. You'll even send it out an email saying, hey, your certified mail's on its way. Keep an eye out for it. It prints up labels for any kind of package. Anything you would do at the post office, you can do at stamps.com. And when you're done with all your mailing, you call, you just press a button in the stamps.com interface and the post postman comes and picks it up. And that's awesome. We've got a special trial for stamps.com. If you do any kind of mailing at all in your business, if you're a seller on eBay or Etsy or Amazon, if you send bills out, if you send out mailings, you've got to have a stamps.com account. You've just got to. I don't know how you could survive without one. Uh, especially as we get closer to the holiday season and the post office gets more and more crowded. That's amateur hour. The pros use stamps.com. So here's the deal. Go to stamps.com. You see the microphone on the website. It's in the upper right-hand corner. It says, uh, you know, heard us on the radio or podcast. Click here. Click that. Type in twit as the offer code. That does two things. It lets them know you heard it on this show, which is important to me. It helps us, you know, monetize our product here. We don't charge you. But if you could use this product, you should just put the word twit in there. Uh, then they're going to benefit you because you're going to get this great thing. Of course, you're getting a free trial of stamps.com, but you also get a, a digital scale worth 50 bucks. That's a USB scale. Make sure you never under or overpay on postage again. You always have exactly the right postage. Now, there is a shipping and handling fee, I think, of five bucks, but they're going to give you a $5 supply kit to make up for that. And even better, $55 in free postage. Free postage, uh, take, you know, you have to use it over the first few months of your account, but that is a great deal. Stamps.com. Click the microphone, use the offer code to it, try it for free, get all that benefit. You're going to love it. It, it just, It's the pro way to do mailing. Stamps.com. Jeff Jarvis is here. Love having you, Jeff. It's nice to see you. I missed you. Also, uh, my good friend Ian Thompson from the Register, all my good friends at, he, and from imore.com. Renee Ritchie. We had scheduled Ben Thompson. I think he either forgot or lost his connection. We'll get him back at another time for just a tech. At the, at the risk of doing more more uh, uh, breaking news in politics. What else? And, and I hesitate to mention this, but but uh, 11 minutes ago, Trump was live on uh, Facebook Live with uh, Clinton accusers. You know what's? Uh, I have to say one thing about Donald Trump is he has is a master of social media. An evil master at that, but well, yes, he is. Well, it depends on well, how you feel about him. If you to... like him, then he's a brilliant master, but he's mastered Twitter. It's interesting to see him using Facebook now. But yeah. It, it has turned around and bit him on the bum a bit because all these things that has been talking about for the last two or three years are now being There's pulled a back and record. used against him. Yeah. You know, there, there is a record online and he can't deny it. Well, but that's the nature of the world, whether you set it on camera or on tape. Uh, this is why you never say anything online that you your can friends justify got it on to YouTube. your family. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm. We're, you know, anytime we want to uh, talk about anything, uh, we do it in person, not not uh, over a recorded medium or uh, email. If you want privacy, the only way to do it is to go out in a park naked. Disassemble your wireless phone. Yeah. <laughs> Leave your phone behind. Yeah. Uh, and stand in the middle of a field. Or or in a clown costume. Oh, the satellites can see you. They can read Okay, this is, field. clowns are interesting. We'll get to Twitter in a second. <laughs> clowns are interesting. So, 
I don't think there have really been that many incidents of oh, clowns. There, been. there have not been. <laughs> but no. because there's all these fake news sites now, mm. you cannot believe anything you read on the internet anymore. Hundreds of stories about clown sightings, scary clowns, axes, clowns grabbing children. And people can't tell when they see this on Facebook or Twitter if it's real or not. They believe it. And so everybody in the world... I was at the gym yesterday in spin class. They couldn't stop talking about clowns. I blame Stephen King. I said, yeah, yeah, it. I said, just guys, throwing galaxy notes at them. And this is not a widespread problem. These are fake news stories, but no one knows the difference anymore. Right I was now. there many, 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 many years ago. I was I was a midnight um, rewrite guy at the Chicago Tribune. And there was a story of a loose kangaroo in Chicago. And I ended up on the BBC doing like weekly <laughs> reports about this, right? And it turns out that's a regular thing. There are loose kangaroos supposedly in cities. They get into boxing matches with people. And this is a story that goes, it's a very Snopesy thing long before Snopes. And clowns. And it never happened? I there was never a kangaroo? Sewers, right? I don't think so, no. You have alligators um, in your sewers, Jeff. How yeah, are we going to believe you? Have alligators yeah. in sewers. Yeah. You have clowns yeah. in the woods. Yeah. The great thing about the clown story is, indeed, clowns do creep me and freak me out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, they're this off. is this is uh, I, I. There's a guy at uh, UC Berkeley. I can't remember his name. Uh, Jeff uh, Dun Dunnis or something, who specializes in sick joke cycles. Uh, he's a sociologist, uh, oh, well, and his know. theory is that you know, and you know, there were the elephant elephant jokes. Uh, there, his theory is these jokes are an outlet for taboo subjects. He says the elephant jokes uh, actually are racist, but you would say thing it would it would it would happen during the civil rights era that became very popular. It was a it was an escape valve for some deep existential angst people were feeling. So they tell these jokes or the dead baby cycle. There were all these dead baby jokes right about during Roe v. Wade when abortion became started becoming a big topic in the national psyche and it was a way of diffusing these and i think the clowns there's something going on in the psyche that it's diffusing something guess what just a hmm. theory where do the fake clownish in fight them? our psyche at the moment hmm. our psyches are our psyches are burning right now you weren't you weren't here for this leo but there was uh, andy covered a story on on mac break about how uh, this video is telling people they could just drill a hole in their iphone to get the headphone jack oh that's back. hilarious nobody fell for it. that did anybody they, fall yes. oh in the year nobody the year, before, the year before you could microwave to charge it the year before that you could throw it in a sink and, yeah but but really year. did anybody drill a hole in their iphone no nobody knows because the comments could be as fake as the videos yeah. I would be shocked. Well, I wouldn't be, but I'm used to dealing with human stupidity, and it's just... <laughs> How stupid know. do you have to be to drill a hole in your iPhone? <laughs> Seriously. It lets the pressure out. Nobody yeah. did that. That's like clowns in the woods. I think it's just another yeah, no. urban legend, I think. Yeah. Well. Anyway, Twitter. So Twitter's for sale, right? <laughs> we agree that Twitter's for sale. It's uh, option B and B. Apparently, there's been a battle in the boardroom. we got to get Nick Bilton in here because he's the only guy who really knows what's going down at Twitter. But there's a battle in the boardroom. Jeff, um, Jack Dorsey, does not want to sell Twitter. He wants to continue to be CEO. Ev Williams, one of its founders, says, yeah, it's time. we got to sell this thing before it all collapses in on us. But there's nothing left to sell. Yeah. Yeah. This, so that started the rumors. Twitter's stock price went up, right? Because, well, that could be good. Well, hell, Ev said it publicly. Right. And then so publicly, they're going to look at options. Google says, "Yeah, no." And and uh, and um, who else? Microsoft Disney, says Disney. Disney. Said well, no. the big one was Disney, Disney. Was yeah. Apple says, "Yeah, no." The big one. Then the stock really went up. Disney. Yeah, Disney says, "Yeah, no." We were kind of in no. competition in the office as to who was going to be saying no next. Time. Bernie Sanders says he won't buy Twitter <laughs> next as well. So no. Salesforce is the last man standing. Mark Never going to happen. But apparently, all of the uh, all of the shareholders are running to Mark saying, "What are you crazy?" Yeah. And you can't. I mean, you can kind we of. We have ignore chatter. Them. It's good enough. You can kind of ignore the shareholders, but not really. No. And apparently, the institutional shareholders, including Fidelity, which has double digit mm. percentage of. Uh, stock in Salesforce is saying, yeah, no, Mark, no. Isn't it a perfect match for Google's Jaiku purchase, Leo? I mean, they could just make <laughs> one awesome <laughs> workout. So, uh, ah. is so now Twitter's tanking. Yeah, in the stock market. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm sorry, they tried when to it's build never been more relevant in terms of popular culture. Well, the, yeah. and this is Twitter in a nutshell. At the same time yeah. as it's horrific and horrible and disgusting, it's also uh, unbelievably fascinating yeah. and changing the world. You, mm. you know, uh, you after the debate. Uh, here I am in the middle of nowhere. 
I got no connection to anything, but I'm able to scan Twitter yeah. to see what people are saying. And it's it's really the yeah. best way to to kind of... If you want the raw data feed of what's going time. on... Yeah. You know, well, I is, question how good it is because at most there's 300 million users. Yeah. Probably yeah, more than half of those, probably only 100 million are real yeah. people. And only a half of that really are active. Hmm. So it's a tiny sample. But it's a fascinating sample. It's every it's journalist, very engaged, right? It's an incredibly engaged yeah. sampling. And it's, yeah. and it's interesting people. It's journalists and, yeah. and psychos. But at the same time... Politicians. The, which politicians. But you've got to... The economic realities can't be ignored. It has never made a profit. It will never make a profit in its current format. The only value that it has is in the data that's collected about its users. And that's not worth $30 billion. No. It's not worth... Yeah, no. Even at a discounted price, they were talking, what was it, $42 per user... Yeah, uh, which is a fraction of what Facebook is worth per well, user. Exactly, it's still not worth it. And Facebook has so much more useful stuff on users. Google's probably the only company that could actually use Twitter's mm. information. They would sort of be like a custodian. They would buy it like as a foster child and sort of put it in one wing. But but, but the brand damage to them—that's yeah, the problem. Then, then yeah. every schmucky yeah. thing that's said—that's the real problem. Blamed for it. Nobody and, wants and to own Europe? Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nobody wants to own Twitter because nobody wants okay. the Twitter stank to rub off on them. And no, nobody yeah. wants the unedited voice of the people. Well, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it is particularly good at pulling out the worst of the worst of a lot of people as well. I don't think it's it's an accurate sampling of us because it's it, there's some pretty bad humanity on there. By the way, John mm. Ledger has just tweeted that T-Mobile is suspending sales of Samsung's Galaxy Note 7. Ooh. Yeah. All sales suspended. Out of abundance joining, of caution. Yeah, well, mm. joining Verizon. Uh, uh, AT&T. Bye-bye. They've, yeah. they've got to do a full Chipotle, yeah. Full Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having to steal that, my friend. Yeah, that's spot on. Here Time for the full Chipotle. Um, so whether Twitter... Now, I look at... Okay, so 4chan struggling, right? 4chan, the original meme factory. Uh, uh, Poole uh, uh, pool sold it. Chris Poole sold it. Um, nine well, how months much? ago. Do we ever know? Pardon me? Do we ever know? How, for how much? Did he... Can't have been much. Moot no. never made any money on it. No. Uh, no. Sold it. Now the guy who owns it saying, we're not, we're losing our shirt here. We're running out of money because nobody wants an ad on 4chan. No. no. Uh, well, okay. Nobody's selling anything legal once but an ad on is, 4chan. Is, yeah. is, I feel like Twitter and Reddit are, gonna, are the next dominoes to fall in this. And here's the common thread anonymity yes what we've learned is that while anonymity anonymity has some good reasons for it it also allows the worst of us what was that famous joke right anonymity plus internet access plus broadcast equals the you know i, I would think it was uh, penny arcade did that famous cartoon yeah yeah and i agree we should have anonymity but i'm rethinking this idea i think you know part of it was i had this utopian notion that the internet true democracy would give everybody a voice and that could only be for the good and then i found out that a very very tiny percentage of people are horrible mm. and yeah. and the problem is their voice is amplified to the point where what's that book say i'm i'm buying books now about civility civility is you know, I hate to admit it, but maybe you know, Andrew Keen was right. Andrew Keen, remember? Oh God, please! He wash wrote your the mouth. book, the cult, of, <laughs> the cult of the please. Amateur. He was arguing that there is a reason why the elites no. run things. Whoa! No! 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 I think it's no, anonymity. Because, because like, no, the, the, he's arguing in the defense of elites and institutions. Right. And I'm starting no, to I'm think sorry, he's not far going, wrong. No! 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 The problem is this, Leo. So, so, all right, pardon me, drinking game time. I happen to have a glass of wine right here. Thank you. So from Gutenberg, pardon me, <laughs> on, right, uh, I, I, I had to write a piece recently about Martin Luther. And, 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 and if we are in the year 1450 was the press, 1475 is where we are now versus the web, right? Martin Luther was born in 1483, and he didn't start publishing until about 1505. We're, we are Martin Luther isn't even born yet. So it's too soon to say, oh, forget all the future. Let's hold on to the old institutions. Let's keep the aristocracy. No, right? But we haven't, we haven't created the replacements. In the Arab Spring, we tore down. We didn't build up. Right. Donald Trump and the Republican Party, they tore down. They haven't built up. Right. This is the era of tearing down. Um, now, Martin Luther did start a new, he tore down the Catholic Church, but he built a new church. And, and, and we're not yet at that stage 
where we're building what's new. So I do think there is a there is a call to civility. There is a call to rethinking the notion of building civilization on the net. But that does not mean that we kill the future and retain the past. That ain't working. So elitism is part of the past that you do want to discard. Well, that's what that's what I mean. The, 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 the great paradox of Trump. I'm not getting political. Don't worry. But here's a guy with gold toilets whose entire appeal is down with the elites. What if I say instead of elites, meritocracy? No, that, that, I think that's wrong because because merit's not a bad thing. People aren't against true merit, I don't think. Well, that's what unearned the, merit, born merit. Oh, I agree. I agree with you, but highly like, educated. Like your British friend next to you. <laughs> hey, hey he's got a posh accent. So, no, so social mobility, accent social mobility in this country is worse than it is in the UK at the moment. Really? That's really? how big a problem you've got. Yeah. Really? The, the entrenchment of I certain people. I think Ian's right. Yeah. It's the last the, for the last five or six years, the London School of Economics has been doing a study on this. It's worse over here, and I never thought I'd see that. It's one of the reasons well, the I can't really nice. The rejection yeah. of science in North America is appalling. But I think we were at a point yes. where we're not mature enough to be able to have civilization and anonymity at the same time. <laughs> because we quickly, when you're anonymous, you quickly forget about the repercussions of your actions. You're almost drunk. Uh, you know, you're power crazy on the anonymity. You think yeah. suddenly all your all your darker yes. angels can come out and play without any fear of repercussion. So we, I think anonymity definitely has value, like you said. But when you get a lot of people together into groups, we have not shown the responsibility needed for it. So here's yeah. the big question I, I always wonder is, is does openness necessarily breed trolls? Is there an opportunity to have openness in a way that can be civil? Do you equate mm. openness with anonymity? I think anonymity uh, breeds trolls. No, I, I disagree because I can name plenty of a-holes by name. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, maybe. I mean, um, but at least... Anonymity is not it. No, I think, I think that openness allows anyone to do anything. And, you know, I celebrate that as a rule. Uh, but... Uh, uh, how do limits get put on? Is there an I mean, equal I, and opposite, like equal and opposite people who are just so pious that they're jerks as well? I mean, I think there's probably both ends. We just don't see it as much. Yeah, I think the, the, the other the other thing is the freedom of speech is also the freedom to edit. Yes. And and this is where people. I and mean, I think Facebook has done some really boneheaded things, like killing the 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 napalm photo, not realizing the pornography of that photo was not. Yeah, the but they, that was a that was a mechanical thing that they reversed right that away. That was boneheaded. Right? Yeah, but it was mechanical but, and they reversed it. But it was still their right. At some level, it is their right to decide what does and does not go on their platform. If you're platform. a publisher, they did, they you did have editing power. Yes, and that is, a, that, is a, that is a mode of freedom of speech, too, so that, you know, you can be 4chan and anything goes. You can be Reddit and, and almost anything goes, and those are places where you can go and do that. But if you're Facebook or Twitter, mm. do you choose not to be that? Now, Facebook chooses not to be that. You're right, Leo, because of identity, it, enable, it, it enables that process. But it's not. There's plenty of jerks on on, on Facebook. Ah, I don't know. It rises to the same level, though. Does it? No, not Twitter, quite I the think same level. It's an aid, but it's not a solution. I feel like Facebook and originally Google Plus, because of their real names policy, has a has really avoided a lot of the. Google Plus the was with Twitter because is, of the user control. Oh, maybe and, and Twitter also, I think the frustration was that they, they didn't do things when it seemed like they could. Like, for example, you could give people absolute freedom of speech in their own timeline, but the minute they put an at mention in it, not have that same level of freedom because now you're involving other people. And it just looked like there are probably seven or eight different solutions, and it looked like they implemented none of them. And I think that's where the – like, you can, you can so argue that Instagram buy, or Facebook. So, okay, assuming there is a technological solution to Twitter's pollution problem – I'll call it a pollution problem, right? You've got a stream mm -hmm. with some really great stuff, but there's chunks floating in it, and we'd like to get the chunks out. Ooh, ooh. Assuming there is a solution, ooh. who should buy Twitter? Some uh, oligarch. <laughs> yeah. Putin. Donald Trump. Well, it's not on Twitter just now. Uh, got in Mike Sheridan said that the Donald Trump buys Twitter. He needs it. <laughs> he can't afford it. I mean, I think that's the... Oh, by the time by the time all this is done, he may be able to. Yeah, um, I didn't see. Certainly this. not a brand, not Leo, not a brand that. Can, that's why Disney never made sense. Now Disney yeah. has to keep a clean image ultimately. Absolutely, right? Emily, yeah. never made sense. And I frankly, think, so does Apple and Google. Yep. I think what's going to happen is some uh, hedge fund or private equity group will buy up Twitter, think we can make a profit out of this, futz about with the actual format of the, of the platform, and kill it. Uh, that's who's the, the ones who bought Palm, right? It's Ultimate Group. Some, some yeah. the same people who bought Palm can yeah. buy Twitter. And yeah, yeah, but we don't have Mad LG. King Leo to running running HP to, in the same way that we had with Palm. There, you know, I mean, the, the kind of people McAmey. with enough money to buy it now, I think, are going to the private equity and hedge fund crowds. That actually makes sense. 
Uh, and they've got the hubris to think they can fix it. Exactly. If I yeah. were one of those guys, the first thing, though, I would do is canvas the smartest minds. At what is the solution? What is the fix? What is the filtration system? And, and how would it work? And could we implement that? Because you could polish this turd and turn it into something of great value. I mean, there, there's no, I'm not disagreeing. There's huge value in Twitter. Yeah, I mean it's it's an iconic brand and a lot of people love it. Not just it. the brand, the actual content. Well, yeah, is but I mean people people actually love it. They use it on a regular basis. That's fine, but it's making money out of it, and they've so had Twitter years died. now to try and make money out of it, and they can't right, exactly. do it. I think you're right, Ian. So so so, but but, but uh, you're both right because Leo's saying there's an insight here, which which you know, with Ev has always had Blogger was an insight that changed the world. Blogger itself was never a good business. Twitter was inside the change of the world, never a good business. But so let's say that Twitter gets bought by a hedge fund and ruined or gets bought by uh, Verizon and, and gets ruined. But where does that insight go? If you were going to build something new, knowing what we know about Twitter, ah, what would you build? That's interesting. And people something with, with no anonymity. Of... Leave anonymity to the other guys. Now you see, or anonymity, least, is, anonymity is troubling. At Not least it's hard to say it's two troubling. layers. That there's a truly verified layer uh, that has uh, Google Plus like control, and yeah, there may be a crap layer. Yeah, tw Twitter's moved in that does. direction, right? And then you'd have you uh, could say, I, yeah, but they, yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't know. I think there is a role for anonymity in that it gives people a, a, a way that they can speak out. And the the initial idea behind it was good in that you judge people based on what they had said in the past, and you made your judgments about their personality that way. But it's broken down for multiple reasons, chiefly that you can make as many anonymous accounts as you like and be as nasty as you like. And I should and point out, by the way, that we have a very wonderful chat room yep. that, mm -hmm. that embraces anonymity. Uh, that You can use a handle. You are totally mm -hmm. anonymous in there. And the reason it works is we have constant moderation yep. and cultivation, mm -hmm. and we pay attention to it. And that's true of any anonymous. Same thing with forums. You, you know, yeah. every forum's gone through yeah. that period of, if you ignore it, the weeds grow, and pretty soon nobody wants to be there. We and have then that's dozens it. and done. dozens of moderators in our forums. Moderation, we, we though, yeah. is the solution. I obviously Twitter can't do that. Yeah, no, I mean, we with, moderate our own forums, and it just right. like, yeah, it's you need to have someone in there saying, no, that's stupid, don't yeah. do it. And it's not as simple as it's not as simple as just kicking people out. It's actually working with people and cultivating people, yeah. talking, making people. them part of the community, educating yeah, them, yeah. put some value them. into the yeah, communication yeah, yeah. platform. Mm. So uh, there's breaking news on two fronts. Uh oh, now what? Uh, number one, Billy Bush just got suspended. Good. Uh, I don't think he should have come to work tomorrow. I agree. and number two, uh, Zuckerberg is still grilling. He now has friends with him. <laughs> there's smoke rising. Grilling really has got a beer. I gotta go back to his. <laughs> no one told me I was gonna be this way. <laughs> He has 122,000 uh, followers right now. Live is he going right to counter-program the debates? Are they going to be able to have to choose between Zuckerberg's <laughs> barbecue and the debates? Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. Like that, yeah. Or what about watching with Mark? That would be good. Yeah. Um, ooh. Yeah, I've been drinking some Anchor Steam recently. Yeah, I did local beer. <laughs> good is it? Great. It's good beer. All right, well, there you go. Now I, now I think that's probably where... I think I saw Sam Lesson in the photo a minute ago. <laughs> is that <laughs> Sam? No, I think it was Sam yeah, was in a minute um, ago. Sam Jersey worked at Facebook, says, but no longer Jersey does. Girl. And high from his Puerto own Rico. startup. I think I did. I could be wrong. I saw somebody come yeah, by real quick. Yes. Yeah, Sam. Sam's a great guy. What's he's Mark got, drinking? What's that? What's he drinking? Looks like San Pellegrino. Patricia Sophia. What kind of sides are we are we having? You know, I'm a purist. When when I smoke meat, we just <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, no just I, I'm I'm the, I'm the meat chef. Priscilla has made Brussels right. sprouts and broccoli. Broccoli, yeah, that's Sam. There's Sam. Yep. Maxima helped to make. <laughs> we just love Paris. it. With somebody. <laughs> I want to. I want to go to that delicious. party. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm just there. waiting for somebody to yeah, not realize that the camera's turned on. Cool. Somebody who's wankered on too many anchor steams. <laughs> just, just like trip. Was well, there someone from. behind that fence? What are the neighbors doing right now? Are they peeking over there? No, no, no. He bought the neighborhood. Remember? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he, that fence is like, uh, is purely aesthetic. It's a Hollywood. Yeah, it's a Hollywood fence. Um. Wow. In our 123,000 people <laughs> watching and Wayne's World, basically. <laughs> it makes me sad uh, well uh, that I built this studio, that I did it. I mean, this is crazy talk. Party on, Zuck. Party on, <laughs> Zuck. Party on, <laughs> Zuck. I wonder, too, I wonder if it's a, uh, if that's a, if that's a, that's a uh, Mevo camera. Uh, look, oh, he's got, uh, he's got uh, uh, emotional symbols floating. Or there, maybe it's only when it's little that you get that. 
The emotional, you know, the little... Uh, oh, there's some angry faces. Uh-oh. Sad. Oh. It's over. Mm. Uh, <laughs> don't, be, don't be sad that it's over. Be happy that it happened, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, celebrate that it existed. <laughs> That you got to be part of that mo brief moment in history. I, you know, Smoke I'm just glad I wasn't here all week. I don't know what happened, but fortunately, they've created a small movie to dramatize the events of last week at Twit. Let's all um. watch together. <laughs> on Twitch. This is the first uh, Gears of War for the Xbox One console. If you have an Xbox One and you want a good online shooter, cool. If you've got a Windows 10 PC that's pretty powerful, definitely get this. Yeah, but it's not in VR. So, I mean... <laughs> With live specials. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell, and I'm here at Oculus Connect 3. Uh, <laughs> largely, this event feels like a coming out party for the Oculus Touch controller to really showcase how much that can enhance these experiences and move it into the next dimension. All about Android. Today marked uh, the big event in San Francisco where Google uh, made many announcements of new hardware. That but one of the most important things that came out of it, I think, was their new marketing strategy around the term made by Google. But they made it very, very clear that like the Pixel phones, which we'll talk about, as well as the other items, were designed by Google. I've wanted an iPhone that runs Android forever, and today I have one. Wow, that's an interesting. I know that about you, Jerry. That's the new screensaver. The PlayStation nice. VR. It comes out next week. This is bizarre, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's actually really good. The the head tracking. I couldn't get to the hot dog, so the freezer was under this table, so I couldn't get to it. So I just I, saw you. I just defaced the whole the whole place. Is ruined. I'm never getting that job back. Twit. Tell your boss it's job related. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Coming up, a great week ahead. Megan Maroney, what's, uh, what you're working on? Hey, thanks, Leo. Here are a few things that we will be keeping a close eye on in the coming week. The PlayStation VR officially launches in the U.S. this week on October 13th. It's planned for a midnight release and many game stops and Best Buy stores will be open. Eight physical games will be available that day as well. If you're willing to wait... The Oculus Touch is available to pre-order this week on October 10th and will be available for the Rift on December 6th for $199. Facebook at Work launches this week at an event in London on Monday, October 10th. This is the social network's business version of what is arguably the best tool man has ever invented to waste time. October 11th is also Ada Lovelace Day, an international holiday held every second Tuesday in October to help spread the good news of women in STEM fields. Back to you, Leo. Thank you, Megan Maroney. Tech News Today is your daily dose of tech news every Monday through Friday. Uh, catch it at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, 2300 UTC, or watch it on demand at our website, twit.tv, or wherever you get your uh, podcasts. By the way... There's another way you can get your daily dose of tech news. We are now part of the Amazon uh, Echo, uh, awesome. the Flash Briefing. They opened up the Flash Briefing to a lot more outlets. They invited us. We were thrilled to participate. So if you have an Amazon Echo, open the app uh, and uh, uh, search for Twit in the uh, Flash Briefing settings and add us. We make new content every day. Uh, it'll be stuff from this show, the new Screensavers, TNT, and other shows as well. A uh, great way to start your morning. Just a short hit of Twit on your Amazon Echo. Search for it uh, on your Alexa app. Uh, Jeff Jarvis is here from CUNY. He is, of course, our regular on This Week in Google. Will you be here Wednesday for uh, Twig? Yes, I will. Good. Now that you're finally back. I'm thrilled to be back. I had a kind of a Jeff Jarvis travel experience all over the world. Oh, no, I don't go on luxury ships. How were, how were the ships? <laughs> Uh, we were on the Regent Seven Seas Cruise. It was very nice. Good food. Great service. Nice people. No, no, All of them in their 80s. The river thing. How the river thing versus the ocean. The nice thing, thing about the river thing is it doesn't rock. Uh, the motion of the ocean is unpredictable. And we had a couple of rocky days. Don't bother me, but uh, they don't bother me. But uh, if they bother you, you probably shouldn't go on a cruise. And, uh, and then uh, the other thing about uh, riverboats is they're slow. And pretty much everywhere they go, you're in town. Uh, cruise, yes. you're at, you could be out of town. Although this was a small enough ship that we were in really good locations everywhere. It was pretty fun. Looks right? fantastic. It was. Yeah, I yeah. had a nice. had a great time. A vacation. And you were a spiffy dresser, Leo. You like the pink poncho? Is that what you're talking? <laughs> no, well, like, no, like the tux, the suits, the tuxes. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know when you're uh, living uh, the life of Riley, you've got to dress the part. It was friends. almost an Ian Fleming novel. <laughs> Bond. 
Uh, also uh, from uh, the Register, register.co.uk, my good friend Ian Thompson. Always great to have you here. Always good. And from imore.com, Renee Richie. Let's talk about Yahoo next, okay? Okay. Fire, uh, fire up your Yahoo. But I don't know if I can stand the tragedy of it, the pathos. It's so sad, isn't it? I feel like Twitter's moving in that way too, kind of. We had to write an article about how to get off Yahoo because you can't just delete your account. We had to yeah. write like how to delete all the. I the have that it. question, as a matter of fact. Good. All right, uh, I want yeah. to talk about that. I was here. I am on a boat with very little internet connectivity, desperately trying to delete my Yahoo account. <laughs> Quick! Uh, I decided not to. I turned on two-factor authentication. I figured that'd be enough. I was they deleted it for me years ago. I'm glad if they. If I didn't it use it for a while, they killed the ca yeah, account. Yeah, remember so they. About that, but yeah. now I'm happy. Yeah, it was Steve Gibson who actually made me uh, kind of nervous about it because he was saying like you forget like these are digital artifacts and you forget what's tied to your Yahoo right. account and what yeah. recovery emails it's used for and what data is in right. all the, the email you've got accumulated there in terms of other accounts and other access points. Uh, and I stopped to think about it and I said I just did exactly what he said. I made a pseudo random blob and I did not save it to one password. Oh, and it's just it's empty good. now and I'm not getting back into it. Yeah, all we right. did we did a quick poll around the office and there were like six of us there. Everyone had a Yahoo account. Only two people had actually used it for yeah. anything in the last year but when you think you're right when you think about what's actually on there from all the years past yeah. it's kind of scary stuff and yahoo really have screwed the pooch on this one in a very bad way we'll explain in moments but first a word from audible.com one thing i did bring and i will always bring anytime i'm on a long plane flight or a, a cruise i bring books but i don't bring stacks of paper of dead trees i don't even bring a kindle I bring my audio books because I have the Audible app on all my devices. And I brought 12 audio books. And I ended up buying another one uh, because we were in Russia. And right about uh, when we were in Russia, I started hearing about this new book about the Romanovs. Oh, what a story that is. <gasps> 300 years are crazy. <laughs> it makes you feel a lot better about modern times when you realize how crazy it was in the old days, I'll tell you about that in a second, but let me first tell you about how you can get it for free at audible.com. Audible is the internet bookstore for audiobooks. I've been a member, a subscriber for 16 years since the year 2000 when I had a horrific commute. It saved my life. I've read hundreds of books that I probably wouldn't have read had I not had an Audible account. And I just love it. Fiction, nonfiction, science fiction. I listen to Audible all the time time. Now, if you go right now to audible.com slash twit2, that's audible.com slash twit and the number two, we're going to hook you up with the Platinum account. That's a two book a month subscription. It also includes a daily digest of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, so you can get your news that way too. Audible really is great audio content of all kinds. Great courses are on there too. So you can take the best college courses in the world uh, as part of your Audible subscription, which is great. You're going to be able to pick two books. Now, the the, the subscription is free for the first 30 days. So pick two books, Girl on the Train. Oh, before you see the movie, read the book. What a great book that is. Uh, get those two books, listen. Cancel any time in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing, but you, you get to keep those books forever. So that's kind of nice. Uh, Audible is just like a regular bookstore where those books are yours and you can download them anytime. I, uh, I have a lot of older books too that I have uh, from Audible that I wanted to re-listen to. So go to audible.com slash twit2. The Romanoffs. Great book. Uh, started, of course, uh, in the 1613, I think it was, when the first Romanov Tsar of Russia and ended with uh, Nicholas, Tsar Nicholas, who's had, had, you know, was killed by the yep. uh, Bolsheviks. This is it. What a great story, 1613 to 1918. And when you listen, though, it does make you feel a little bit better about modern times, as bad as it is. <laughs> At least we haven't sunk that low. <laughs> we low. have not <laughs> sunk that low. There has been some progress. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, it is a fascinating book. And a really, uh, a lot of uh, people are, are celebrating it as a, as, a, as a great history of the Russian czars. Uh, you could get that book and something else. Audible.com slash twit2. Two books waiting for you for free. Get them. Get them. Uh, Yahoo. Oh, my mm. God. Now it's gotten so bad that Verizon has said, can we get a billion dollars back? Yeah. yeah. A billion dollars back because we are buying damaged goods. So first there was the breach. The, yeah. the, that's the first thing that happened. Every It was hundreds of millions of accounts, right? 500 million by some accounts. The biggest breach yeah. of data ever. Uh, I did not get to hear security now. Were the 
I presume this stuff was hashed, at least, uh, right? Passwords were hashed and some security questions were hashed, but only some of them. Although I think Steve was explaining that they would migrate you to a better hash if you re-logged in, but many people never re-logged in, so they were stuck on the old hash, which and, is not and very weak hashes anymore. are easily broken. Yeah, mm. yeah. In fact, if you have a bad password, even good hashes are easily yeah. broken. Yeah. Five hundred million accounts. So that was the first thing I heard. Oh, I was aware. How long? That, I mean, the fact that we didn't know. Yeah, it was two. Yeah. Years. They didn't know for how long, and then we didn't know for how right. long. Right. At least for at least four years. Um, so if you ever had a Yahoo account ever, you're screwed. Which includes so, like Flickr because people don't think about it. But Flickr, Flickr is Yahoo. Right, and yeah. right. Uh, by the way, a Yahoo knew about it in August. Yeah. Didn't say anything. Well, I, well, first, how? why did it take so long for Yahoo to know that it existed? Is that is that a, is that they have a legitimate excuse for well, that or it, not? It sounded like they they didn't care about security at a very deep corporate level. Like people brought it up to them internally, and they were it was, it was told it was not a priority to them. Yeah, which they, is, well, uh, unless they were doing it on behalf of the of, of the NSA and the CIA and the FBI, but that's another story. Some and, some Yahoo staffers actually did go to yeah. the New York New York Times over this, and they were within the company. They were known as the Paranoids, <sighs> and apparently Alex Stamos, who was hired as uh, CSO went head to head with Mayer on this one. Stamos uh, is smart and good and I yeah. like Alex. And that's why and the reason he left is apparently because they weren't taking security seriously and then the news about the hookup with the intelligence agencies came in and that looks even more like Well, let, let's stick with yeah. this breach because Yahoo at least knew about it in August and failed to inform Verizon mm. until a couple of weeks ago long after the sale. So they so they're in Deep doo doo because yeah. you can be not... complicit and incompetent. It's important to realize that you both. can do both things. Yes, <laughs> they. I mean, they had a re responsibility to disclose this to the potential buyers. They did not. Yeah, that doo doo mm -hmm. has a dollar figure attached. Significant, to it. Yeah. maybe a billion dollars. At least that's what Verizon wants back. It could well queer the whole sale. I mean, Verizon aren't. My my read talking to people at Verizon is that a lot of people at Verizon aren't that keen on this in the first place, and this could give them an ideal get out. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, they absolutely could walk away at this point. Either way, Verizon gets a better deal. Yeah. Yeah. Verizon gets out or gets yeah. it a hell of a lot cheaper. I don't yeah. know what the fee for abandoning the deal is. It's probably significant. Oh, unless there's cause. But if there's yeah. cause, that mm. might go away. You get out of jail free card. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that? I mean, the, the brand value, especially now when, 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 when giving over data to third party, because when you, when you transfer a company, you have to transfer all the personal data to what is basically a third party, that is the purchaser. And that's always a big issue as is. And now all that data is suspect uh, or, or has about it, not suspect, it has about it now uh, these cooties. Uh, Very disappointing. That it's it's apparently uh, uh, um, Marissa Meyer knew about it. Yeah. Uh, that's extremely disappointing. It's, it, I mean, it is... As you say, it's a, com a combination of incompetence and whatever else. But I mean, it's it's interesting. The Malfeasance also, would be the word. Well, well, well yeah, like bad we things have happen, but it's how the, the company UK. reacts to it that is important. And we've seen other companies react to these sorts of things. And you, d this is just again an abysmal reaction, and that you can't walk away from. Something bad happens, you do the best thing possible. You treat your customers great. You try to solve the problem. People sort of respect that. But if if something bad happens and you make it worse, then that the damage is extreme. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. a week later, we find out that Yahoo complied with a federal request. Oh, it did more than comply. Well, <laughs> it gets <laughs> it's been it's getting getting worse. So, uh, the apparently the and this was approved by the secret court, the FISA court, uh, but it, but it probably shouldn't have been because it was clearly a phishing expedition. Apparently, Yahoo went through all Yahoo Mail, it looks like, looking for a signature for a malefactor that the, uh, uh, that the feds wanted. Um, now, of course, when you get one of these letters, you can't tell anybody about it, and you pretty much have to comply, although many companies, including Twitter and Facebook and Apple, have fought these uh, as hard as they can. There's no evidence that Yahoo fought it. Furthermore... They did in the past. They had in they, the past. They, yeah, in the past, this? they fought against the, the right. national security letters, and they lost. And it looks at this point like they got another one of these things. Oh, uh, let's just get it they done. They spent a lot of money fighting these, and they said, yeah. you know instead what? of opening the kimono, let's just take it off. We're going to lose too much trouble. We're going to lose. Why battle? But then they made it. it uh, then this is unclear. But uh, the, so Reuters had this original story, but now there's further evidence hmm. that the, initially we thought, oh, they just modified a spam filter to do yeah. a little bit more straining. No, apparently they wrote something akin to a rootkit. 
Now, I'm unclear on this. Did Steve uh, talk about this on Tuesday? I don't know. I don't recall. I think not because I don't uh, think so, this yeah. broke afterwards. So we'll talk about it on Security Now Tuesday. Well, that'll um, be fascinating. The thing, <laughs> at, the, at the moment, there's only one person who knows the truth of this. And that's Alex Stamos, and he's not talking. Yeah. Now, probably for very good legal reasons, because I'm presuming he yes. got a gagging clause the second he left Yahoo. But he's the only person at this point in time who can tell us exactly what happened, because he was in charge of the servers when this apparently took place. So until we hear from him, everything else is speculation at the moment. According to Motherboard, uh, Yahoo engineers didn't merely modify spam... They built a tool, installed a rootkit on Yahoo's mail servers without telling anybody. Stamos and his security team found it and thought they'd been hacked. Yeah. And then we're told, oh, no, 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 that's us. We did that on purpose. And it was buggy and poorly designed and yes. as a result exposed 300 million Yahoo users themselves to hacking. I mean, that's what Google and Apple tell you. Well, they, they will never code against their own code, their, their own base, because you expose it to far more than just the people who are legally want an access point to it. Now, we should say these yeah. are anonymous sources, f f supposedly former Yahoo employees who told Motherboard this. So this is unconfirmed at this point. But uh, that is uh, that is. It was interesting because when we got in contact with Google and Facebook and they both said exactly the same thing, hell no, there's no way we would do this yeah. even if we were instructed to by the government. Now, they've got deeper pockets than Yahoo and they could probably afford to fight it. But this is just death for Yahoo's brand. I mean, bad enough to lose half a, you know, half a billion email accounts. What but brand? Well, okay. <laughs> it still had some. You, know? well, you hear that. You hear that from rank and file too. Like people at Apple or Google will tell you that they would rather quit than ever do this sort of thing. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. not, it's, it's. Well, all you have to do is there. find one guy who says, oh, that's an yeah. interesting challenge. I'll write that. Uh, maybe not so good a programmer uh, as it turns out, but anyway, it was well, apparently yeah. done. And according to Motherboard, uh, this software would give the NSA or the FBI or whoever requested this effectively unlimited, undetectable access to, get this, all Yahoo yeah. users' data. All so content. not just email, anything. Everything. Yeah. Thank and you, you got, Yahoo. Uh, who's still using Don't Yahoo? Yahoo they really want the Yahoo. information from. Sorry, but I... No, I was just saying, like you don't you, you don't really hear the tech aficionados using Yahoo, you know, that no. much anymore. So I wonder who's, you know, how helpful is this data? But really? as you point about, out, everybody had a Yahoo account. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, yeah. very true. And also, Especially it's not that and such. you know, it's it's older users, but older users sometimes have power. Who was the, was it John Brennan, who was found to had an have an AOL account that he was yeah. still using? Oh yeah, I still I have somebody just last week who had a Yahoo account. So I couldn't believe it. Well, and, and weren't um, some no, of the so phishing attacks? Like they used when they they used the security words they got off Wikipedia to hack into politicians' email on Yahoo and AOL and services so, like that. So, and this may also explain why uh, there's you know if you're going to get fished, uh, it's going to be because you had a Yahoo Mail account. It is the it was always been the worst for yeah. security, right? And I never could quite understand how. Well, maybe now we know. Um, let me ask you this, Renee: How do you delete your Yahoo account? There's no button. So you. Yeah, there's no button, which is you know again appalling in this day and age because you want you want to give people the ultimate control over their data. Uh, but what you can do is you can go in and again I'm cribbing this from Steve, so correct me, Steve, if I did anything wrong. Uh, you go in and you just delete everything. You just burn it all down. You delete all the mail. If you really care about it, you can download it to an offline service that you run on your own. You know theoretically completely sealed computer system at home uh, but then you just you delete what's on like you delete what's on yahoo mail you delete anything else that you have there uh, and then you just change the password to some big pseudo random blob that you don't write down anywhere and that'll keep you from accessing yeah. that account again and anybody else like 64 pseudo random or 32 pseudo random characters you'll be safe for years to come theoretically <sighs> wow hmm. wow 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 Maybe. There is no security beyond the grave. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. as simple as well, let's, not forget, it, let's not forget, you, before Marissa Meyer, but long back, Yahoo was the company that gave information to the Chinese government, and a man spent 10 years right. in yes. Chinese prison because of it. Yeah. This, is, this was their heritage. This was known. They got a lot of rightful crap for that. And then even after that, this company allowed this. Yeah. That's, what, that's what's doubly shocking to me. Yeah, very sad. Uh, well, there you have it. Um, it's going to be an interesting security now on Tuesday. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys. What a great show. Kind of, I feel like we kind of cobbled it together. 
Yeah, we knew oh, we were so going to have Ian. So we're merely cobbles here. Uh, we're merely no. cobbles. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nobody go. had to know, Leo. Nobody had to know. You could have said, "Oh, well, our guests are all here." No, <laughs> I like to be honest, but I think I, the spontaneous twits are often the best twits, and I'm, and of course, it just happens that some of our best. I I always here, love so. being at the big table on Thanksgiving. Yeah, likewise. There you go. That's a good way to think of it. It's Canadian Thanksgiving, so it's a half a big table. <laughs> thank, but thank it's you. a very polite table. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very polite. Thank I'm you with a good sense of humor. Thank you for <laughs> taking some time on your Thanksgiving Eve for Renee. We knew we could get Renee because he's always working. Uh, those 100,000 word reviews don't write themselves. What are you working on right now? <laughs> Uh, we're, we're actually doing a little bit of, uh, we did all the iPhone reviews, all the Apple Watch reviews, so now we're finishing the how-tos because iOS 10 and Watch OS 3 and TV OS 10 and Mac OS Sierra all landed at the same time. Wow. So we had to rewrite so many things yeah. that they're, we have a fantastic team now, but we're, we're still slogging our way through all that. I, uh, I just found, my uh, iMac, my two, 2012 iMac died, and thanks to Glenn, who's visiting from Australia, he, he found out, or no, actually it was a Scooter X, found out that there was a recall nice. on the three terabyte fusion drives in those 2012 IMAX. I happen to have one of them and that's and apparently that's what happened. It just died while I was gone. So uh, there's always something going on in the yeah. Apple world. Technology yeah. barely works at the best of times, Leo. Renee will be <laughs> back on Tuesday for a, a great yes, Mac break weekly. I look forward to that. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's video has ended. I guess oh, they're open now. It's Whoa. time to eat the meat. Uh, <laughs> now that's a I video a lot more than 100,000 people would watch. I watched. really wanted to see Mark after about five beers. <laughs> I know. He could, he could have just done like uh, with a Masterpiece Theater for the debates. He could just sit there with yeah, his bottle. A loose and... Mark would be great to see, yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> and maybe like Elvis, he could shoot the TV at the end of it. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis, City University of New York, CUNY. He's a professor of journalism there. My God, if you could study journalism with Jeff Jarvis, <laughs> wouldn't you want to? Buzzmachine.com is his blog. He's written all the greatest books, including What Would Google Do, Public Parts, Gutenberg the Geek. You can find it, uh, him at uh, Jeff Jarvis on Twitter and every Wednesday right here with This Week in Google. Thank I you, I will see Jeff. you this Wednesday. Thank you. Enjoy your debate. How do you, how do you, how will you be watching? With Twitter running in the background? Oh, absolutely. I'll be, I'll be tweeting the whole time. Oh, you'll I be think. tweeting. Good. I'll be tweeting. I'll be following. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and then I have, obviously, some specific lists, including fellow Hillary fans. What I and want is all the most snarky, you know. And, and, and you also football. want the GIF makers, right? The animated GIF makers? Well, so, yeah. yeah, so, hashtag, so last time I was snark, on with a bunch GIFs. of Hillary people. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and as the debate came toward an end, uh, and Hillary did the woof. That was a great uh, GIF. We, we all said, GIF. give us a GIF right now. Give us a GIF. Can somebody do a GIF? Somebody, anybody do a GIF. Um, it's, it's, I didn't, see, I didn't see her the, do it, but the Shaquille O'Neal cat Hillary uh, <laughs> combination was <laughs> magnificent. One of the, the reason that animated gifts exist. And I picked a bad time to give up airplane glue, another, another <laughs> wonderful meme. Uh, let the memes begin in half My an hour. My favorite meme of the last two weeks was the Bill Clinton going up the uh, Air Force One steps. I haven't seen that one. No, what's that? So Obama comes out, they're, they're leaving Israel after Sharon's funeral. Obama comes to the door of Air Force One and says, Bill, come on. And he comes back again, Bill, we got to go home. Come on. And he goes, but one third more time, Bill, I mean it. Come on. But that wasn't and a meme. Gets, that was real, right? It was real. Bill, Bill goes upstairs. So, so the meme that came after that was uh, uh, Clinton coming up holding a big balloon saying, sorry, I had to get my balloon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always worth waiting for a nice balloon. Ian Thompson from The Register, great to have you. You'll be back Saturday. Well, for, uh, yeah, I'll be doing new screensavers yeah. next weekend, but then I'll, I'm currently planning to be um, staying strictly within the speed limits, of course, going back home to watch the debate, so no. <laughs> well, come over to the house if you want. You can watch it with us if you'd like. It'd be fun to have a snarky Brit huh. going, you you Americans! You yeah, fools? I know, but if you get a couple you of glasses. fools! <laughs> this is the independence you fought for? Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we just find it hilarious. You, know, you fought for independence against aristocracy, and now look at you. It's just oh, like... Oh, Lord. <laughs> One of those things. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks to a great live studio audience, somewhat diminished over the uh, last two hours, but uh, a few of you hung in there. <laughs> Are them? I don't know. You know, it's a long show. They're making it home for the debates. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be in the studio, you can. We have an open studio. We love having visitors. Just email tickets at uh, twit.tv, uh, and you can be here for the, whatever live show happens to be on. Tickets at twit.tv. 
Uh, we'll send you uh, directions to our secret destination. Uh, you can also watch the show live Sunday afternoons, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. We stream it as we do with everything, 2200 UTC. Uh, if you can't watch live, though, we can always make on-demand versions available. Audio and video at twit.tv and wherever you get your podcasts. iTunes, Stitcher, Slacker, Google. Uh, you can ask your Echo to listen. And it, it has, I think we're on TuneIn. You can listen that way. But make sure you get every episode. Subscribe. That seems like the best way to do it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad to be back. And I'll see you next time. Another twit. It's amazing. Is in the can.